Let's see, Upper Montclair, Upper Montclair. Uh, you listen to the Digital Dash, hosted by me, Javier Reyes. And it's time, as always, to go through the opening dash. First up in movie news, um, Captain Marvel, uh, the trailer for the, the highly anticipated Marvel film, Marvel Studios film. Uh, this trailer dropped last week. Um, really cool trailer. Uh, the movie comes out March 6, 2019. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen it already. Looks really cool. Brie Larson, of course, stars in the movie alongside Samuel Jackson and Jude Law, among many others. Uh, should be really interesting. It's obviously a big step. Um, you know, female-led superhero movie. You know, all the you know connotations of that, of course. So it's going to be interesting how that pans out. But that's not the only Marvel news that came out this past week. Um, Tom Hiddleston's Loki and Elizabeth Olsen's Scarlet Witch are expected to get their very own TV series. Um, to what extent, we're not sure. This via Variety. Loki, Scarlet Witch, other Marvel heroes to get own TV series on Disney streaming service. Disney is enlisting Earth's Mightiest Heroes as the company prepares to launch its upcoming streaming service. The entertainment giant is in early development on an ambitious plan for a number of limited series centered on popular characters from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. These series will likely include shows centered on Loki and the Scarlet Witch, along with other beloved superheroes who have yet to appear in their own standalone movies. Um, If anyone was listening earlier today on The Morning Buzz, I talk about that extensively uh, with uh, my two other, um, the two other hosts that were present, uh, Frankie Perez and Molly Jean. It was really cool. I'm, I'm excited for this, but not enough to be rooting for it in a way. I've discussed before how I think there needs to be competition, of course, and I don't want Disney, you know, re- owning everything. So I don't really want them to kill it with this, uh, this streaming service that they have coming out. But we'll see. Obviously, it's big properties and they're probably going they're probably going to succeed immensely. So we'll stay tuned to that. Um, another little small story is that Disney is planning to slow down the rate at which Star Wars Star Wars movies released. Uh, this was a big interview. Um um, at, on Variety that you could check out with CEO Bob Iger and basically he described how they're slowing down the Star Wars movie production. Uh, I think this is a smart decision because, quite frankly, I've always thought that Star Wars was something, or at least I most recently thought, I should say. I don't want to act like I'm Nostradamus with this or anything, but I thought it was a little bit... I didn't think Star Wars lent itself as well to this annual Marvel type of thing where they could just put out a movie every year. I think that the aesthetic and the themes or the... Just that universe is it's in space, and I think there's something different than with that versus Marvel, which is putting out you know a movie about like Thor Ragnarok, and then you're you know that's a cosmic space movie. Meanwhile, Spider-Man: Homecoming takes place in the streets of Queens, basically. And I think there's a big difference there, and I think that you know and this goes again to why I don't think that it's accurate to sort all of these Marvel comic book movies into just a superhero genre. I think that's silly. But anyway, I digress. Moving on. Uh, Space Jam 2 has officially been been given the green light, it looks. Space Jam 2 is a go with LeBron James as its star. This via E! News. Space Jam 2 is happening. Spring Hill Entertainment has just posted new details about the highly anticipated follow-up to the hit 1996 movie starring NBA legend Michael Jordan. Now, over 20 years later, Space Jam 2 will star basketball icon LeBron James as a small forward with Bugs Bunny co-starring as the point guard. It's the Spring Hill Entertainment Instagram post, which shows a locker room, also reveals that Terrence... Nance will direct the movie, and Black Panthers, Ryan Coogler, will be a producer on the film. James also confirmed the news to The Hollywood Reporter on Wednesday. So obviously big news. I feel like this has been in the rumor mill for, for a while, and ever since LeBron's kind of really shown that he has an interest in in Hollywood and the movie industry and all that stuff, I think it was only a matter of time before this was announced. But the the producing news about Ryan Coogler is a little bit surprising. I think it's interesting. Coogler probably can do whatever he wants at this point after he did Fruitvale Station and Creed and, of course, Black Panther. So we'll see how this pans out. Um, I'm excited, but it's clearly going to... I don't want to say clearly, but it should be a big deal when it comes out. It should be. It's been a while. I don't know if this is an idea that people still care about as much, but still LeBron is as big as ever, so I'm sure they'll do fine with it. Uh, Next story we got on here, um, The Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone, yeah. One of the great TV shows probably ever made. Uh, Jordan Peele is set to host The Twilight Zone Revival. Uh, this via Variety. CBS announced Thursday that Peel will serve as host and narrator of The Twilight Zone, the revival of the classic science fiction anthology that he is producing with CBS Television Studios and Simon Kingberg for CBS All Access. Peel steps into the on-camera role originated by Twilight Zone creator Rod Sterling, which introduced and provided narration for episodes of the series during its 1959 to 1964 run. CBS announced last year that it would revive the Twilight Zone for streaming service CBS All Access with Peel's Monkey Paw Productions and Kinberg's genre films. Peel and Kinberg are set to serve as executive producers alongside Wynn Rosenfield, Audrey Chan, 
Carol Serling, Rick Berg, and Greg Yetinez. Yetinez. I don't know how to say that name exactly. My, my apologies. Um, obviously, this is pretty cool. I mean, The Twilight Zone, I, I'm not kidding about this. This is really just one of the most brilliant shows probably ever made. And I, I love bashing on um, old popular culture and old entertainment because a lot of times they think that it's superior to the things coming out today, which some things are. But sometimes it's just like, eh, you guys had some good ideas, but you also had a lot of weird things that do not age well. But The Twilight Zone is probably the thing that I would say is the epitome of something that ages well. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this. Obviously, Jordan Peele, big name. And he's got his movie Us coming out with Lupita Nyong'o sometime around next year, I'm going to say, in 2019. Uh, next up on the list, Michael B. Jordan is set to star in a new Tom Clancy film series. Yeah, so that whole Jack Ryan stuff, um, this via Slate. Michael B. Jordan to star in two new movies based on Tom Clancy novels. Two of Tom Clancy's books, Without Remorse and Rainbow Six, are getting adaptations from Paramount Pictures, Variety Reports, as part of a new film series. Michael B. Jordan, most recently seen as Black Panther villain Killmonger, and as Guy Montag in HBO's Fahrenheit 451, will play the lead John Clark. The series will begin with the 1993 novel Without Remorse, and it will follow Clark's story from a Navy SEAL during the Vietnam War to a CIA agent. The second installment follows Clark fighting as part of a counter-terrorist group called Rainbow. Um, this is a really odd thing because the timing of this is strange because just last week we got a report that he was being considered for Superman and then he signs on for this Tom Clancy project, which is kind of an old, you know, an old fashioned IP that they haven't really been able to replicate, um, in a long time. So I'm really curious to see how they do it with this time. Um, I like Michael, Michael B. Jordan. I certainly think this is a more interesting and, uh, I don't want to say more interesting, but more appropriate role than that of the Superman report that we got last week. So we'll see how that pans out. But let's move on to our next story. Uh, the next James Bond director was announced. Yeah, this is a big one. Um, this via GameSpot. The next James Bond, the next James Bond movie's new director has been confirmed. Known for now as Bond 25 has a new director. It's following the departure of Danny Boyle last month. It has been confirmed that true detective Gary Fuganaga will helm the 25th movie in the long-running series, which hits theaters in 2020. As reported by Variety, Fukunaga will start shooting the currently untitled Bond movie in March. The film was originally set to start production later this year, with the release date set for December 2019. However, following weeks of uncertainty over who would helm the movie after Boyle's exit, it has been confirmed that it will now arrive on February 14th, 2020. Uh, So big news there. Um, The last James Bond movie was not received very well. Spectra, of course. Um, and that's kind of followed the theme of James Bond the past couple of years, where the first one is great. That was Casino Royale. Then they did Quantum of Solace. Or I'm, I'm, what I mean by first James Bond movies are the, the ones starring Daniel Craig. You know, Casino Royale, great. Then Quantum of Solace. Eh. And then Skyfall, in my opinion, awesome. And I know a lot of others, too. And then Spectra. Eh. So it's this really back and forth thing. But hopefully with True Detective's, um, the True Detective uh, creator doing this now. Um, it should be in good hands. And also, if history tells us anything, then it should be good. So looking forward to that one. Um, just to quickly run through this really quickly, uh, there was a first look given at Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker. Um, this via The Independent. Um, a first look at Joaquin Phoenix and his Joker makeup from the character's new original film has been revealed. Director Todd Phillips shared a screen test of of Phoenix in his role as the iconic DC villain, which sees the actor in civilian clothes crack a smile to the camera while flashes of him in full Joker mode appear on screen. Um, the article goes on to say anything. Plot details remain thin on the ground, but the standalone film will reportedly take place in the fictional Gotham City during the 1980s and may see Phoenix's Arthur start off as a struggling comedian, a nod to King of Comedy, which was directed by Joker producer Martin Scorsese. The Joker has a budget of $55 million, which is significantly less than Warner Brothers' other comic book adaptations like Wonder Woman, Justice League, and so on and so forth. So really interesting, despite the le- lesser budget, the film still boasts an impressive cast. Phoenix is set to be joined by Robert De Niro, Zazie Beetz, and Mark Marin. Joker will be released in cinemas October 4th, 2019. Very interesting. A uh, lot of good people behind this movie. I'm not sure if we actually need a Joker movie, but then again... I don't think it matters if we need things in in quotes anymore. I think that a lot of times people keep saying that it could still turn out good. We didn't need something like, honestly, in a way, we didn't need them to bring back Star Wars. We didn't need it. You know what I mean? We still had the originals, but they brought it back, and I think they've they've succeeded pretty well there. We didn't need a Jumanji sequel, but we got it. Nobody really wanted it, but it came out, and a lot of people saw it, and I thought it was personally, I thought it was great. So you never know. you got to see what's going on in all these things. So, you know, really multifaceted thing. 
Um, two last stories for Netflix. Uh, there's reportedly a Diablo animated series um, that's coming to Netflix. It's via Variety. Um, ooh, let me get that there. My computer glitched out for a second. Um, Boom Studios founder Andrew Andy Cosby tweeted on Wednesday he is in final talks to write and show run the upcoming series from Activision and Netflix. In quotes, it's exciting. It's very exciting. I hope to the high heavens it all works out, he said. So that's pretty cool. Um, obviously, I'm rooting for it. You know me. Video games getting adapted of any sort, any franchise. I'm always rooting for it. Um, and then the last story for movies. Uh, big news of last week, for me anyway. Live action uh, La- Avatar The Last Airbender series is coming to Netflix. Um, Netflix has announced that it's releasing a reimagined live action Avatar series on its service in partnership with Nickelodeon. Production will start in 2019. And the animated shows creators Michael DiMartino and Brian Konitz. Oh my gosh. Konitsko will executive produce the new run. Details are unsurprisingly scarce at this early stage, but DiMartino and Konitsko stressed that the Netflix production would include a culturally appropriate, in quotes, culturally appropriate non whitewashed cast. Really exciting stuff. I'm not going to talk about it too much because uh, a friend of mine might come on and talk about it more um, in a future show. So I want to leave all my thoughts for them. But my thoughts, of course, are optimistic. I hope they can redeem the travesty that was the live action movie so we're going to take a quick break here and when we get back we're going to go through some video game news and introduce a little bit of a, a tiny new segment to the opening dash so you want to stay tuned for that here on 90.3 wmsc upper montclair and we're back here everybody on 90.3 wmsc upper montclair going through the opening dash next up to video game news not too many stories this week but nonetheless still some important ones um spider-man for the playstation 4 yes this is like the 15th week in a row that i've talked about this game it is officially the fastest selling PlayStation exclusive of all, of all time, beating about earlier this year's God of War, selling around 3.3 million units so far. Um, really big news, of course. Obviously, huge property. Great game. Uh, you can check out my review of it in the Montclair Student Newspaper um, that I posted last week. Uh, loved the game. I thought it was great. Um, I'm probably going to try and have a friend of mine uh, who I've mentioned a lot on this show. Her name is Sunna. She's the opinion editor of the Montclair, and she's, she's a, a dash dodger. That's what we call people who avoid and bail on the digital dash. You don't want to be called a dash dodger, believe me. <laughs> but anyway, um, we're gonna. I'm gonna try and have her on at some point. Don't know when to talk. Have like a little spoiler cast about the game because I have a lot of thoughts about some of the story decisions they make in that game. Most of which that I'm a fan of. Anyway, but you'll have to stay tuned for that. I'll announce that as we get closer. Um, next story though, the PlayStation Vita is dead. That's right, it's dead. This via Kotaku. The PS Vita is really dead in Japan. No successor currently planned. Starting next year, PS Vita shipments will stop in Japan, reports Mantan Web. Sony Interactive Entertainment exec Hiroki Oda added, Right now, I'd like you to consider that there is no PS Vita successor hardware. Uh, the article goes on to explain that released in Japan in 2011, the PS Vita was Sony's successor to the PlayStation Portable. The Vita found its greatest success at home, but those days, it seems, are drawing to a close in Japan. So this is kind of like a... The writing's on the wall. Um, it's probably all production is going to be ceased for it soon. Probably not going to make any more units. Certainly not going to be making any more games. Uh, so yeah, long live the Vita, I guess. I have a PlayStation Vita. It was a solid console that didn't get enough support, and I think that they just kind of didn't push enough for it. They didn't get enough really mainstream titles for that system. There's a lot of cool like JRPGs and you know Japanese role-playing games that are available for it, but those aren't the type of things that sell like systems. You know what I mean? Not exactly, anyway, at least here in the United States. Um, and so the fact that it's not doing well in Japan is, it shows you it's soon it's going to be over. So RIP to the PlayStation Vita. But that's the, not the only uh, console news that came out last week. Um, the PlayStation Classic console has been announced um, via the PlayStation blog. Um, today we are excited to announce that we are bringing back the original PlayStation experience in a new miniature ad version. The PlayStation Classic. The console will come preloaded with 20 classic titles, including fan favorites such as Final Fantasy VII, Jumping Flash, Ridge Racer Type 4, Tekken 3, and Wild Arms. So those are some pretty pretty big games. Um, we don't know for sure all the rest of them. I don't believe the full slate has been announced, but still, um, got to look forward to that. I'm really interested to see what the rest of the games are. Obviously channeling, um, taking a, a note from uh, Nintendo's book when they released the NES and SNES Classics these past couple years um we have to see what it is it's gonna launch um let's see here it's gonna launch december 3rd 2018 for about a hundred dollars u.s standard currency um i'm curious to see how this thing does i think it depends what games they put on it though final fantasy 7 is the big one here but i wouldn't be surprised to see 
you know, some other like issues arise from that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not entirely sure what they're going to get out of this thing, but we'll see. Um, next on the list though of stories, uh, PUBG may be coming to the PlayStation four. Um, PUBG, of course, players on battlegrounds. It's kind of like the other game that's out there with the Fortnite genre. Um, really interesting that it's coming to PlayStation 4. It's, it's basically this big Xbox and PC game right now, almost exclusively. This be a game spot. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds may be heading to PlayStation 4. A listing on a foreign's ratings board site suggests that the Battle Royale game may be heading to the Sony platform, which would mean the end of Xbox One console exclusivity. Um, interesting. Uh, I've never played Player Un- uh, PUBG. Um, I've played more Fortnite, which they're kind of the same thing to an extent. Um, PUBG is a little bit more detailed and a little bit more serious looking, while um, Fortnite is more of a animated, cartoonish kind of vibrant style to it. Um, and I think everybody everybody's heard of Fortnite, even if you're not into video games. And PUBG is basically the same thing as it. So we'll see what happens there. Um, I'm probably not going to be picking up though. So let's move on. <laughs> uh, next story here. Yeah, this is a small thing. Um, Kingdom Hearts 3's box art was revealed. Kingdom Hearts 3, of course, the long, long, long anticipated sequel for Kingdom Hearts 2, mainline sequel, I should say. They've had all these other little little mini side games in between then. I get my friend Adam Grisani to talk about that for sure. I'm probably going to ask him to come on the show to talk about that series, a series that I've kind of fallen out of love with because I think it got too convoluted. But nevertheless, great box art, really great box art. It looks beautiful, um, very similar to the previous box arts of all the other Kingdom Hearts games, but of the first one and the second one. And there's some cool fan theories going on around on the internet that you can check out about what the cover means and what it symbolizes and all that stuff. Really cool stuff. So uh, the game is still expected to launch on January 25th, 2019. But knowing Square Enix, who knows if that gets delayed? We'll, we'll see. This game has been in development for like 13 years. Um, next thing on the list, uh, Rockstar Games has announced Red Dead Redemption 2 Online. And it's launching in November. Um, Rockstar has shared the, this via GameSpot. Rockstar has shared the first details regarding Red Dead Redemption 2's online mode, named simply Red Dead Online. As was the case with Grand Theft Auto V's online component, GTA Online, Red Dead Online will not launch alongside the game itself. Instead, it will debut sometime in November 2018, one month after Redem- Redemption 2 itself releases, and will start as a public beta. Anyone who owns a copy of Red Dead Redemption 2 will have free access to Red Dead Online. There's no indication the multiplayer mode will be made available separately. Um, interesting stuff, of course. Grand Theft Auto V comes out later in October. Um, yeah, I don't think this is really surprising. I wonder how they're going to kind of step it up from what they already did with GTA Online. Um, I'm not really sure how they can make that better, especially with the old, you know, the Wild West. I don't know how you can make more features in a more primitive, less evolved time period in, you know, human history. So we'll see how that pans out. But, but you know, huge, uh, huge game coming out. And I'm looking forward to playing it for sure. But lastly, we end on um, some sad news is that Telltale Games has been hit with a series of layoffs and the studio is effectively closing. Um, Telltale, this via Polygon, Telltale Games, the developer of licensed adventure titles such as The Walking Dead series, Game of Thrones, and Batman has laid off most of its staff with the intention of closing the studio. The last season of The Walking Dead game released this this year. The second season of Wolf Among Us and an upcoming Stranger Things series were in the works, with the latter still perhaps on the horizon. Um, the recent partnership with Netflix seems to suggest a company planning for the future. Um, so yeah, founded in t- 2004, Telltale Games spent nearly 15 years popularizing the choice-based, story-heavy adventure game genre. Despite the highs of The Walking Dead seasons and The Wolf Among Us, recent superhero retellings and other projects failed to capture much commercial notice. Um, I have a lot, you know, in a, I feel bad, of course, my thoughts go out to all the people laid off. It's terrible to see that, and, you know, hopefully they can find some work because they're clearly very talented. Um... It stinks, though, because in, on one hand, they kind of bit themselves in the foot. They kept putting out new licensed the, of these games that they did, and they never fixed like some of their issues. I know those games are super buggy, and they have the same like uh, issues, each one of them, no matter if it's Guardians of the Galaxy or Walking Dead or Sam and Max from the old games. A lot of the same errors there. So instead of fixing what they had, they just kind of kept reselling it but doing a different skin for whatever uh, franchise they were adopting. So yeah, that's the end of end of that so you know really unfortunate hate to see that type of stuff um so that's the end of the video game news and lastly i want to introduce a new thing to this um before i close it out is that part of the opening dash i want to do like a little reads of the week where i just quickly go over three articles or 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 books or comic books or tweets twitter threads anything that i thought were really good reads so 
you know, going to test this out. Maybe people will like it. Maybe they won't. Um, first up, a uh, good friend of the show, Donovan Russo, he did this really nice in-depth article on Captain Marvel uh, for CNBC. Um, you can check it out there. Marvel's most powerful woman, most powerful character ever is a woman and about to become Hollywood's next billion dollar star. Um, I recommend checking it out if you're interested in getting like a, a little bit of a, a summary of what to expect from the movie, not plot wise, but just what it means for Hollywood and how it's going to sell and stuff. He does a really good job there. So congrats to Donovan um, doing really good work over there on CNBS, CNBC. Um, my next one on the list for my recommended reads of the leaks is Ben Mendelsohn did an interview with um, with Vice um, by the author. Hold on, let me see. I can't find the name of the author that did the interview, actually. Uh, there we go. Karen Han. Um, reason why I mentioned this is because I'm a big fan of Ben Mendelsohn. He plays these really zany, kind of like egomaniacal villains. That's kind of what he's been pigeonholed into lately. Um, so from Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, he was in that. Dark Knight Rises, and most recently, Ready Player One. Um, personally, my favorite role of his is in uh, The Place Beyond the Pines, uh, which is this movie starring Ryan Gosling and Bradley Cooper, among many others. Um, I, I recommend checking out that movie. It's really good. One of my favorites. Um, but the reason why I brought this up is just because he talks about The Last of Us and uh, that everybody should play it. And you know me, I love The Last of Us. So Ben Mendelsohn, you just went up even more in my book, so that's awesome. And the last recommended read of the week, um, Mac Miller, of course, who I've talked about um, before. Um, there was this second... Um, profile interview piece done by Craig Jenkins for Vulture. Um, he's a great writer that I, re- I really recommend you guys checking out the rest of his work. Um, and it's kind of like a more unfiltered, really extensive look and one of the last, you know, basically um, interviews that Mac Miller did. And he asked him all types of questions from the creative process. Um, what it's, you know, everything, everything. And it's a really good interview and I really recommend people checking it out. And it's further evidence of why Mac Miller is one of my favorites. So yeah, that's it for the opening dash, guys. Hopefully you like that uh, reads of the week little thing. Uh, maybe I'll bring it back next week. Maybe I won't. Maybe people message me and say that's that was stupid. You shouldn't do that anymore. Who knows? Um, but we're going to take a little bit of a break. And when we get back, my friend Alex Eichler is going to call in. And we're talking American Vandal, ladies and gentlemen. Season 2. It's going to be a good time. Stay tuned. You're listening to 90.3 WMSC, Upper Montclair. What's up, everybody? We are back on 90.3 WMSC, Upper Montclair. Uh... Hopefully, it looks like we just disconnected, but on the line now is my friend, longtime friend, sort of, uh, my friend Alexander Eichler. Are uh, you there, buddy? Hello. Hey, Javi. I'm here. Uh, what's up, man? How I'm are here. you? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm back. I'm You're great. Back. How are you, Javi? Back from the dead. I'm, um, I'm freezing, actually, for freezing. what it's worth. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very chilly out here in Dublin. Oh, I was I was or just about to say undisclosed one, location, say. but you can disclose it if you want. Oh, That's fine with me. Well, it's been disclosed. Okay. Now everyone knows how to find me. Yeah, there you go. And <laughs> somewhere somewhere in the country of Ireland. Yeah. If people want to, you know, travel out there from New Jersey right now. Um I so, mean, who wouldn't? Yeah, absolutely who wouldn't. So, uh <laughs> if you want to introduce yourself, just say a couple things about yourself, or if not, you're that's fine too. Uh, uh so uh for what it's worth, I'm Alex. I am currently a junior studying at Boston College, except I'm not really studying at Boston College because I'm abroad in Dublin right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Other fun facts about me. (laughs) Uh, I really love Coldplay, but everybody knows that. Extremely safe music. common knowledge around these parts. Extremely extremely safe safe music. music. Yeah, there you go. Um, But everybody knows that. Everybody knows that I love Coldplay, so that's not really that fun. Well, the, the um, Digital Dash listeners don't necessarily know, so keep on going. That's true. Digital Dash listeners don't necessarily know. Yeah. I'm a huge-ass Coldplay fan. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows. Um, I don't even know what else there is to say about it. Basically, if you know someone who's a Coldplay fan, I'm probably a bigger Coldplay fan. We'll just put out that. I can attest to that for sure. Um, I've known Alex for, I'd say, since freshman slash sophomore year of high school. For me, I don't but that's when we were that friends. We like knew each other yeah, yeah, before yeah. then too. Yeah, we knew each other. I think through baseball or something like that. Yeah, we were on the same baseball team. Yeah, that a was couple times sick. I think. Yeah, for sure. Good times. Good times indeed, sir. All right, so I invited you on because I want to talk about American Vandal because for oh, some yeah. reason you're not. The, this isn't a diss. You're like one of the only people out of our friend group who's seen this show for some reason. Like you yeah, know, like my Cavalier, know he's seen like, it before, but he hasn't seen season two yet. I just don't understand right. why. Um, yeah, I don't know what he's doing because he, you know, he's home every night. He doesn't yeah. go to school or anything. Yeah, so it's he like, could what is he doing? very easily 
just you know binge the show in a night. It's not that's what I did. Yeah, it's not that hard, man. Come on, Cav. You know what I mean? Come on, step it up a little <laughs> yeah. bit. Yeah. Um. Anyway. So, uh, just to preface, we're gonna have light spoilers, not crazy like big things in there. I'm gonna try my best not to spoil it, but you know, if you guys don't, I'll want, try. Yeah. Yeah. If you ca- if you, if if I start to spoil, just catch me and tell me to shut yeah, up, yeah. and I will. Uh, same thing here. Um, we're newbies here. You know, none of us are pro experts or anything. So if anything slips, I'm sorry. So just just a warning, final warning. If we spoil <laughs> something, it'll happen from here on forward. So, initial reaction. What did you think of American Vandal season two? I, um, sorry, I was just saying goodbye to a friend. Um, so I thought that season two on the whole was very good. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a, you know, like slight qualms. I don't think it was as funny as, as the first season. And right. the only other person I've talked to about the show has the same opinion. Right. Um, subject matter is a bit different, but also just as crass as it was as the first season. Mm-hmm. Um, on the whole, I thought it was very well done. I think they covered up some holes that were present with the uh, with the well, one really main hole that was present in the first season, which mm-hmm. is obviously the how ending. do these high school kids? And, oh, that's it. Well, no, well, the ending I, I just how do these high one, school yeah. kids have have yeah. Netflix quality, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, video cameras and such. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And so, you know, the <laughs> little disclaimer at the beginning by saying, "Oh yeah, we were picked up by Netflix." That was yeah. great. I was, I was like, okay, that's good. That's Good, the good thing they cover their races on that one. Yeah, you're, you're talking about the beginning. The opening episode, I think, of season two is is really great. It gets so meta that it's almost, almost annoying. It was, yeah, almost annoying because you're just like, this is super annoying. brilliant. It's super brilliant. Right. It's just it brilliant. Was, exactly. Um, it was almost explain, annoying, but then it was like, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, no problem. <laughs> it's a little bit harder when you're speaking with someone like across the planet, basically. Um, yeah. But basically. They have that nice little little uh, clip where they show this is what it looked like before the funding and after. So like I can imagine they made like a derezzed version, like a couple exactly. like clips of it just for that opening bit. Like the people who are like probably... writing for this are incredible. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And like the funny thing is they probably used like you know like an old camera phone, like an iPhone four to like record mm-hmm. it or whatever, just to like you know cover their bases, which I thought was pretty funny. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned how you thought that uh, last season was funnier, and actually, I kind of agree. I think that this, what was interesting about this season is it was oh hello there. There's some people who are just you know a little bit intoxicated. <laughs> a little bit. Just yeah, because for you it's really late over there. So they're on the way. They're on the way to the bar that I'm headed to after this. So mm-hmm. awesome. Um, I think that. I think that what's interesting about this show is that, you know, it has a crude sense of humor for sure, especially the first season. The crime is literally that he drew, you know, junk. I don't know how to phrase this. Phrase this Gen- genitalia. Gen- genitalia. There we go. Thank you. Genitalia <laughs> on the cars of teachers in the parking lot. You know, Jimmy Tatro's character. And what's interesting right. is that this one is a just as crude, but also kind of serious. Where like, you know, Tatro's thing was fairly innocuous. You know what I mean? It's not affecting anyone really. But you just watch yeah, it. Yeah, there's a this one's there's like, a difference between graffiti and like just general like, like bodily yeah. function d- yeah. bus- dysfunction, I should say. Issues. Yeah. So basically, the, um, the 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 main premise of this season is that um, there is the turd burglar, and that he the turd burglar. Yeah, that's his, his name, and he has an Instagram account, know. and he that's the crime this time is that he made a bunch of people basically poop their pants uncontrollably. Everyone in the school during lunchtime, and he's committed other poop related crimes that they get into. Um, and what's interesting about this show is it, it also has kind of this main catalyst character. Like, Tatra was, like, the main subject, I mean, for the first season. And this one, it's this character, Kevin McLean. And he might... I think this is where the show succeeds more. I think the individual characters are both really funny, but they're not too out of this world like some of the Tatra characters in the first one. Some of, like, the the people who were faking, hooking up with certain people, like that uh, that one funny guy. I forgot his name. Um, the, guy who, the guy who says he saw him in the parking lot, that dude. Um, yeah, where it's yeah. like It's intentionally kind of over the top, but this one, it's like, I thought this kid was hilarious, like, the entire time. And right, I, I, I completely agree. Um, so, yeah, the, I think the characters are less almost memes, you know? Yeah, a little bit um, less. And I'm more, and I'm more, I mean, the, you know, granted, Kevin McLean is still... He's a he's a he's a, essentially a meme of kind of like a socially awkward yeah. kid. Yeah, for and sure. he doesn't really he he does a very convincing job of like portraying yeah. it. 
He's really well, into portraying tea. that character too. He's really into tea, and the way he's he really talks, into tea. I think we've all met people oh, yeah. who talk like that. Just super pretentious, oh, and it's amazing. And yeah, I just like think you're better than yeah. think you're better than you, whatever. But like, um, but like that said, like like even though he's still kind of a meme, he's still a, a very I don't know more realistic, I guess. It's yeah, just kind cause, of because Tatro's character, they show you like, man, we had like the best. Uh, best youtube channel ever man and it's like obviously it's a meme and it's just trying to poke fun at all this stuff but even to it gets to a point where you're like all right this guy's just a little bit too ridiculous it's a little bit right. too much there wasn't there were hardly any times during this season and i feel like this was a stark contrast from the first where i was like yeah this is completely meme mockumentary you know what i mean like i kind of got a lot of the details about this show they get into the basketball player um they get into all kinds of people this rich girl this kid who has weird fetishes he's really that was, oh my god that was incredible well, yeah that was a quite the scene but it felt like that was yeah did any it, i don't feel like there were too many i mean there were points of course because this is a mockumentary it's supposed to be satire of course but there weren't too many points in this this season where they intentionally just drummed it up to like 500 you know what i mean I, all these I things think, are, are conceivable one, you know I think, yeah, I think the difference between the two seasons is that this season felt kind of real, which is yeah. like a little almost scary. Yeah, like that's what mm -hmm. that I was about to get done. into that, yeah. This is a, dis um, it is dark. American Vandal season dark. two it's, is dark. And yeah, it, it touches on a lot of topics that are prevalent, especially today with social media, with the turd burglar posting all over the place, just the images of people. And it's really disturbing. And the finale I thought was superb. Um, oh, absolutely. Because the, the I final felt, two episodes, yeah. really, I think. Yeah, the final two, for excellent. sure. I thought that, and I, of course, I'm decided that I'm not really going to spoil anything, um, that they basically go through all, a bunch of these main characters and their reactions to what happened. And all of a sudden, you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, this is real. Like, I really felt for these guys, especially, I don't, I don't want to say specifics, but, like, I mentioned them, you know, like the basketball player and the rich girl are just some of the few. There's a teacher involved. And you get it. Right. You really get it. And the, the first season, um, I know a lot of people weren't a fan of the ending of season one. I don't know if you were. Um, I assume you weren't because I'm the only one who seems to have liked it. Uh, <laughs> they didn't really reveal who did it. But I just kind of liked yeah. that the point was people were pretending to be rooting for this guy, Jimmy Tatro's character, that I can't remember right, right now. I don't know because that one got dark too. But this one got right, dark right. in a hyper-realistic way and a very, um, what's the word? You know, it, it's it's a, like I said, it's an issue that's prevalent in society today with social media and just the, right, the fabrication so, so the, of an image. Yeah. So the thing that I wanted to kind of bring up was that I thought was interesting, but only really lasted for like three, maybe four episodes was the bringing like all these mental health professionals in to speak on the documentary. Right. So yeah. I thought that was that was interesting because it gave you more context as to where like the season was going up until mm -hmm. like probably see, like episode four or five when they that they just stopped appearing on the on the show. Mm -hmm. And I was a little confused as to why they, you know, elected to only include them in the first couple episodes, especially as some of those issues became more prevalent specifically towards like the yeah, they really the, get, the finale and the yeah, the, the episode agree. before the finale. Those issues get exacerbated a lot more towards the end, yet they don't have the mental health people as much towards the end, which is interesting. Um I haven't really thought about that though. That's a good point. I think that the show still has the humor but I think that the real it's it's crazy to be talking about American Vandal and saying that it feels realistic. Um, right. But I kind of like that. They made it like ridiculous, obviously, this poop, the turd burglar or whatever. But it's treated super seriously. And the characters and people that it connects to are very real. It seems like issues that a lot of people can understand and relate to. And we've seen before in a lot of these, you know, mysterious investigation type things. And uh, once again, the story itself, tons of twists and turns, um, especially in the finale and oh yeah especially. it's just insanely well written you know yeah it's really good and they just get kids or not kids but like teenagers and like this internet you know trendy culture they really nail that um oh absolutely but they also have a lot of humor in there and i just wanted to say there's a shot in the last episode that it shows condoms i wonder if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about right with one of the characters yes and they show so, like yeah. one of those like dramatic like gray background produced shots of them falling yeah. to the floor ace oh i call you ace by the way for this the, re, uh, the <laughs> listeners who don't know um alex uh 
I was laughing hysterically when I saw that. <laughs> like, I, I lost it. Like, the framing of it. They made it look like those shots in the movies where, like, the bullets drop on the ground. Or, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, someone just got really hurt, and instead it's just these condoms, and it was hilarious. Um, but also, I actually wrote down some of my favorite quotes. So oh, my did favorite, okay. Yeah, I did. You want to hear them? Sure, go for it. All right, so first one. To a casual observer, we might have looked like lovebirds. Ironic <laughs> that it all started with us playing Angry Birds. That comes from Mr. Uh, Kevin McLean. I'm actually I'm not going to attribute uh, that quote. I'm not going to attribute the quote to everybody because I don't want it to be totally spoiled. Some of these are sure, spoilerish, sure, sure. but yeah, that was hilarious. That's like the second or third episode, and that got me. And you, yeah, and that with, was what's, the most Kevin McLean like, yeah. thing that could have come out of his mouth. Yeah, that's like um, just in that pretentious voice. voice that he yeah, has. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> And you got to really understand that his voice is incredible for this. Um, like all things white people might ask if they can. Wait, hold on. I got it wrong. Okay. <laughs> like all these white people might ask if they could say the N word. Nope. <laughs> it's just like that made me laugh. I don't know why. And, um, and, and that's not even an issue in the entire series. Oh, no, it isn't. Yeah, they, they just like throw that issue that, that in there. And I'm just like, that's fantastic. Thank yeah, you so just, much for works. including that. Yeah. Because yes, 100 percent. Yes. Yeah. Because it's like in other things, it might feel like thematically like it doesn't belong, but an American Vandal establishes that it's just kind of walls to the walls, like just going all over the place. So that really Absolutely. works. Um, this one got me. Okay. He okay. thinks the Pope is too radical, and I think he's kind of cool. He even switched. <laughs> <laughs> he even switched his throne out for a white chair. I think he's like Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Oh my God! I love the, that you're remembering them right when I get halfway through. That's the through. teacher, right? That was yeah. that was the teacher. Yeah. Oh my Don't God! Don't spoil who and everything, but yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, that was I. I laughed out loud at that. I'm sure, um, because like everybody knows that teacher, <laughs> or that person doesn't even yeah, have to be a teacher. Yeah, it's like everybody those, does. It's great. It's like those people, those people who like you know, write like blogs about you know political things but don't really know what they're talking about yeah, 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 yeah. If just but like but like that blog if that blog was a person is this character yeah, yeah it's so good it's so so good fantastic um so this good. is a quick one that i can't say professor did you eat crap you know and i can't say the s word <laughs> of course but um that one's good because it's just like that's a great sound bite i think oh for absolutely the show. a great sound bite quote um, yeah, like that. that sure. If there was a trailer for the show, which maybe there was, I don't even know if there was, but that would be uh, if if it weren't too maybe spoilery. Yeah, um, it would be a great soundbite for like a trailer. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. Um, next next quote. Damn, did you just shush him? That's crazy. I didn't know people like shushing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. Uh, can so... you give me provide me a little more context for that one? Because I do um, not remember off the top of my head. One of the final four people who are involved at the end. Um, what's it called? He, it's it's in a athletic oh, facility. I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember this. I do. That um, was that was good. Let me see here. Um, uh, what the f is a turd burglar? Um, that one's towards. <laughs> I'm not even gonna say where it is. Uh, that one's really great at the time. Really drop the mic type of uh, line for sure in in there. Uh, right, what else right. we got here? Uh, <laughs> I like I like this one. Do you care to defend the three dollar charge on this ATM? Oh did my it, god. Didn't think so. <laughs> I lost my shit when that ha- Oh, excuse me. Um <laughs> hold on, hold on. I, I lost gotta, my I stuff. That up. All right. It's okay. I can like dump things if you if you say oh, that. Perfect. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Uh let me just repeat it because we just lost the last 15 seconds. Um the quote was uh do you care to defend the $3 charge on this ATM? Didn't think so. Uh I, Oh my gosh. Oh man, I totally so lost good. it when he said that. Yeah. Like <laughs> Because, oh, it's just, uh, you have to watch, you have to see the character in order to understand why that's so perfect and how it fits that character so perfectly. Mm -hmm. All right, so. I I don't even know how else to describe it. This last quote that I have, somewhat spoilery if people want to read into it if they want to, but whatever. Close, just, you know, what is it? Shut your ears? Close your ears for like 30 seconds? Um, (laughs) Something like that, yeah. I was like, why are you talking to fake online girls? I'm right here. And I don't care that you're uncircumcised. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh my gosh, that was another bomb drop. So yeah, those that are was just a, that was a big one. That was that's definitely I think one of the best lines in the whole show. Yeah, and I forgot especially one other given one. context. I forgot one other one. Oh, and worst of all, I now have to officially decline the Gilmanberg Bar Mitzvah. <sighs> Miles, <laughs> Miles, 
Miles told me there were going to be so many older cousins there. <laughs> Out what of context, random... that sounds crazy. <laughs> oh, absolutely. What yeah. a, but what a random character yeah. that Miles was. Yeah, he <laughs> and I loved him. I loved him. He was so good. Um, My theory for him is that he served only one purpose in the show, and that was to answer the door that one time. Oh, maybe. I like that theory. And so they kind of just like wrote him in. Yeah. For those for those listening who have no idea what we're talking about, this character is just like a ten year old, yeah. um, who like just kind of shows up here and there throughout the series, um, <laughs> and he's kind of a meme. Just shows up, it's great. Um, it's fantastic. So Ace, I have to say, Mr. Alex Eichler, I have to say, do it. I'm going big. This might be one of my favorite seasons of television I've seen in a long time. Really? It's just, yeah, it's so engaging, and it's it's funny in a lot more nuanced and kind of cynical ways too, and. Mm. It it's you know it t- it touches on a lot of deeper subjects and a lot more interesting subjects to be to be quite frank. Um, and what I love about the finale, of course, is you know hot take. Um, I love the idea that this is a little bit spoilery. Let me determine if I want to say this or not. But you know the the previous generation loves to mock this generation for its use of social media, and sometimes that trails into the world of of girls and dating and stuff. And my things like. Yeah, because God forbid our generation might care a little bit more about what someone says versus just immediately what they look like. But whatever. Exactly. Um, and I like that this the end of the show is it has a warning, but also this very optimistic kind of upbeat message to send about millennial culture and just the future of the Internet and stuff that I feel like everybody's kind of just going cynical and we're all going to die these days. Um, so right. I'm really happy that they they managed to spin it in a nice way. And it's not. It's not a super depressing show. It just makes you think. And I wasn't expecting to think when watching American Vandal. Yeah, I think Vandal. At, at the same time, it was an both an exploitation of and also like reaffirmation of this kind of right. online culture that yeah. you know, like everybody is a part of. Yeah, it was a good whether you like it or sure. not. A good balance for sure. It's really funny. It doesn't have the slapstickus. Wow, slapstickus, slapstick esque <laughs> um, kind of humor in the first one there is that especially with a lot of the pranks that happen but not as much as the the first one because the first one was just this raving lunatic basically right <laughs> who right. got caught and whatnot um i can't wait for another season i'm hoping they green light it i'm gonna check uh we'll probably get an announcement in like two months i guess i, I'm, I we'll have a feeling they will they can't yeah. not right it's too unique it's too unique of a thing that they're doing right now oh absolutely yeah. i don't know many no mockumentaries like yeah i don't know many mockumentary super meta but also social and cultural commentary things that are out there that work yeah, in, right. on every level. So yeah. Um, that was a fun discussion, man. Yeah, for sure, dude. That was, that was a lot of fun. You have any closing thoughts on American Vandal season two? Uh, well, watch it. If you haven't <laughs> seen season one, watch that first, then watch season two. And then you will understand what we were talking about this entire time. Yeah. Cause or else if you're listening, then you probably have no clue what the heck was going on. Yeah. But, that said, I think it's a fantastic, just a fantastically, like, done show. Like, yeah, there's no really other way well around produced, it. It's just really well very well put together. There's no holes. Um, Good performances everything makes in this one, sense. for sure. Yeah. Fantastic performances, yeah. Um, well, ca- characters are great, too. Mm-hmm. And, and you know. And honestly, kind just of rewatchable. Very well done. I might rewatch this thing again. I don't know. I got to see, see what the future holds, yeah. We'll have I mean, a streaming started, party with If it's Chad. your favorite season of TV. Yeah, it's one of my favorites anyway, for sure. Definitely in a long time. I loved it. Um, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, Ace, I'm so happy you called in. Finally got you on the digital dash as we approach Hell the yeah. top of the hour here on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. We just finished talking about American Vandal. And we're about to – Ace is – Mr. Alex Eichler is about – I love how I keep saying Ace. Um, <laughs> he's about to sign off and go crazy in, in Dublin. At some bar, oh, I assume, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Can I make one request before I go? Absolutely. Just play some Coldplay for me, man. <laughs> you know what? I will do that. I'm going to bring up a song. Thanks. I don't know which song, but I will. Um, Thanks, Javi. I appreciate it. Of course. And, of course, you are officially a part of the Digital Dash Mafia. All we have Woo! on the Digital Dash Mafia are illustrious guests. Only, only illustrious guests. Only. Uh, only. That's the only, ones, the only kind that, that I allow. And if you want to come exactly. on another time, I know you're a big Avatar fan, so maybe we'll discuss that. Absolutely. I would love to. All right. Take care, buddy. All right. See you, Javi. And that was my friend Alex Eichler calling in from a disclosed location uh, in Dublin, Ireland, uh, talking about American Vandal Season 2. It was a lot of fun. Really good discussion. And now I'm going to take a little bit of a break. 
because he's been sitting patiently. Another illustrious guest, and like I said, only, only, only illustrious guest here on the Digital Dash. That's all I allow. Uh, the sports editor of the Montclair. And let me see if I can turn on his mic really quickly. Mr. Anthony Gabinelli. Do you not know how to roll your R's? No, I actually don't. My mom can. Despite my Puerto Rican descent, I cannot roll my R's. Wow, what, <laughs> what a disappointment that is. I know. It really is. I really wish I could be able to do that, too. It'd be awesome. But uh, we're going to take a little bit of a break. And when we get back, we're going to do our NFL Week 4 picks. And a little bit of a recap, basically, of what happened last week. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Love talking football with Anthony. He is the sports editor of the, of the Montclair newspaper. Yeah. Uh, so when we get back, guys, NFL Week 4 picks, uh, stay tuned. You're listening to The Digital Dash here on 90.3 WMSC, Upper Montclair. And what's up, everybody? We're back here on 90.3 WMSC, Upper Montclair. I'm joined now by the illustrious, as I always say, as I always say. What do, what do I always say, Anthony? Eat my shorts? No, that's oh. not what I always say. He was just—he was just telling me off air, everybody, that he wanted to say a certain thing, and I told him he couldn't say it, not on radio. But of definitely course, he tried to, his I best. I definitely too. want the audience to eat something, just yeah. not my shorts. Yeah, I know you do. I can tell. <laughs> you just have that demeanor going on about you right now. Mm-hmm. Mm, really stoic look in your face. I had too. three classes today, starting at eight thirty. Mm. So, I'm pretty much done with today. <laughs> I'm still not done. Still not done. You're on the digital dash. I know. You're definitely not prior done. engagements, man. Prior engagements. Never, man. never want to back out of those. <laughs> Unlike some people. Mm. Oh yes, can relate. Mm-hmm. So, let's talk some football. Do you mind if I relax like this? Go ahead. All right, cool. I have my feet up, so mm-hmm, yeah, no problem. So, it's really comfy. football. Yeah, quite the sport. What's your What's your takeaway from what happened this past Sunday? Uh, the fact that everyone's just wrong about everything now. Yeah. Because yeah. five teams lost. Five, five or six teams lost that no one thought they would. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of upsets. Uh, the biggest one, I, in my opinion, being the Vikings and the Bills. Mm-hmm. I mean, at least Detroit has good players on its team. Buffalo doesn't. <laughs> and they have this rookie quarterback, Josh Allen, who just comes out and runs for like three TDs or whatever. Yeah, man, and he hurdled a guy. Mm-hmm. And Minnesota has like one of the best defenses in the league, if yeah. not the best defense. Yeah, they do. With everybody healthy now, too, like mm-hmm. guys like Anthony Barr and whatnot. Um, and Xavier Rhodes. Very interesting uh, week overall. It stinks that I remember I mentioned this in class where it's like it seems that everyone who was clear of being upset yesterday didn't get upset. But then the one game that I'm not even being biased had one of the better chances of having an upset was the Chargers and Rams. But of course, that one didn't happen because, yeah, you know, I hate myself and I like the Chargers. Man, it's I really got rough. Jared Goff and the defense on my fantasy team. And Jared Goff went off. Mm-hmm. He got me like, and with my ruling again, it's like twenty six, twenty seven points. Yeah, unbelievable week for me. <laughs> I checked like uh, during the one o'clock games how my uh, how this my game was going. That's not NFL one. Hold on, uh, I'll ch- give me a give me a quick second. I'll tell you what had happened. Um, but anyway, I was like down thirty points right away. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, this isn't my week. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna just <laughs> call it. Then uh, I went. I was about to go to bed. And I'm like, you know what? Let's give it. Let's give it one quick look. Let's see how it is. It can't be that bad. I was down thirty before, but all my players are not back and ready to go. Mm-hmm. They played. Everyone played today except for one because I have one. I have a, nice. Who? a, a Connor going tonight for the you Pittsburgh. Hear, you hear, speaking of James Connor in Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. uh, reportedly the Jets have inquired about a trade for Le'Veon Bell. Oh, I know, and they have enough cap mm-hmm. space to sign him for. A I've been while. saying this for a while, where I was like, I would love nothing more than some AFC team to sign the best running back in the NFL mm-hmm. and have him just dominate the Pats for the next, like, three years. Because I think there's this myth. I would, one, give, I would give him the money, though. He deserves yeah. it more than and anything. Like, and here's the thing. I, I mentioned this earlier to you where it's like, I get that the Steelers are technically being smart when you just look at the stats where mm-hmm. it's like, they still do pretty okay without him. Yeah, okay, and this, that's this fine. Connor kid's still pretty yeah, good, too. That's fine. But then you can't be attacking Le'Veon Bell because he's doing the smart thing, which is holding out. And not playing and not risking damage to his body because mm-hmm. guarantee- contracts in the NFL aren't guaranteed. Yeah. And they have the uh, franchise tag on him for about $23 million, I'm going to say. But still, it's only one year. And I look at that and I'm like, why are everybody everybody's so anti-player in the NFL? Mm-hmm. It bothers me. I think that if the Jets sign him, man, that would be awesome. Yeah, dude. It would also save my fantasy team a bit. Even though I won this week, but, you know. The I need my guy back. The father, I believe, has Le'Veon Bell. Shout out to the father. <laughs> oh, the father, um, the father. We keep saying the father. It's like the second week we brought him yeah. up, and we never yeah. actually say his name. 
But we'll just refer to it that way. Let's yeah, let's keep it that way until yeah. he eventually comes on the show. Yeah, Maybe leave one it day. Ambiguous. Maybe yeah. one day. I love that. Um, Maybe one day he'll come on. I don't know. Either way, um, yeah. So going back to my fantasy team, it's uh, I'm up by two points now, and I mm. still have one more player to go, and they have no one. Mm. So I just win. Nice. Yeah, and it's Connor. So he's and it's Connor. Yeah, so it's yourself. James Connor. So he's gonna get me like. At least ten points. I'm just saying it's possible he like gets hit, fumbles the ball, and he got hurt, so he doesn't come back for the game. So be careful. <laughs> just be careful. As long as he doesn't get negative yards, which I doubt, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um. So what's what's interesting is the last thing, really quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, America's team they lost. Yeah, I guess, that means it's a good week against a team that yeah. can never lose at home ever. Mm-hmm. Congratulations to to the uh, America's team. They really are American. I just don't team, like you know? the Cowboys, man. I don't get why everyone in New Jersey is a Cowboys fan. How? How did they migrate here? Because it's this countrywide conspiracy that they're the best and that they're the team. But they that aren't for excellent. No, they aren't. They're like seven and nine, eight. They don't even year, have the most, with a few exceptions. They don't even have the most uh, Super Bowls. No, they're tied with Pittsburgh, like right? the, yeah, it's Pittsburgh yeah. and um, is it just Pittsburgh or is it Pittsburgh and New England or is it New England and? The 49ers with like the second most. I'm gonna look that up. I think it's Pittsburgh with the most with six, and then the 49ers Denver. and Patriots with like five. Denver might up might be up there. Denver I think has four. True. Uh, and they're tied with the Giants. It goes Steelers with six, Patriots mm-hmm. with five, Niners with five, and Cowboys with five. Oh okay. Yeah. So, so, so like they, I'm not saying that like the Cowboys are like the Browns. I'm not saying that they have a storied franchise. You know, guys like Troy Aikman. Mm-hmm. Emmett Smith. They have players for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, Terrell Owens. <laughs> and that one people are for some reason against being in the Hall of Fame for a lot while. But you know, they have a history. But why is it my thing reason why I hate them so much is because they keep becoming more and more valuable. Like they just went up the other day, I think Forbes reported that they're mm-hmm. now worth like five billion. And I'm like, why? I think they're simple. Why it's just it so simple, up? you know? It's just yeah. a star. What represents America more? This this uh, owner who hates protests, this white owner who hates for protest, and they don't care about beating up women, and they, <laughs> they're they fine with you doing that, but, oh, yeah. you better not uh, protest um, um, injustices. That's Dallas Cowboys mm-hmm. for you. And also, what represents it more than Cowboys and Star? You know what I mean? This mm-hmm. giant coliseum of a stadium. No, no, no. We don't actually care about teams that win, and we don't care about teams that may represent what America – you know, kind of position stuff to be, which is the shareholder thing with the Green Bay Packers, in my opinion. Um, no, it's the Dallas Cowboys. So yeah, it's this, it's this countrywide conspiracy that they're America's team. And I, I like, I've I know some Cowboys fans, and like they're fine people, but I they're not like Boston fans. Boston fans I know like are crazy. Well, yeah, they're in the band. So, they're the yeah. bandwagon people. Yeah, they're like bandwagon it's, people. Yeah, because you know, twenty years ago when Brady was non-existent, you know, yeah. it mm-hmm. it was a totally different story. They sucked. Oh, I think they only they didn't even win one, right? Mm-hmm. No. Not one Super Bowl, yeah. No. So why, like, all of a sudden they're all everyone's now a Patriots fan because of Badri, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's my big problem with them. Um, but for the most part, eh, it's just like, can we? I just hate that title, and I hate that they're like always America's game of the week. I remember when they went three and thirteen one year, and they were always showing them on TV. I'm like, why are we doing this? Can't we watch like Pittsburgh and New England? That's happening right now. Can't we watch the actual best quarterback in the league, Aaron Rodgers? Come on, what are, what are we, like what are we doing here? Speaking of. Uh, Brady. By the way, he didn't look too good yesterday either. Um, he's Detroit. old. Detroit. Yeah, he is old. I think. Th- I still think we've seen this too many times, though. We can't assume that this is it. We just we have to wait. Like this has happened way too many times it, with the past. It start feels off different, though. I will say that a little bit. Yeah, the because go- there's something about the because Garoppolo he actually has thing. no one besides um, Josh Gordon and uh, Ryan uh, yep. and uh, Rob Gronkowski. Didn't even play, by the way. He didn't play. He didn't make his debut. Um, and Gronkowski. Really, yeah. he didn't make it. No, he didn't make his debut. So what? Next week? I assume so. Was he hurt? Not sure. I guess he wasn't ready. Playbook, maybe stuff like that. Um, but it's I, it does feel different, and there seems to be this cloud of doubt. Where like I don't know if you saw. There's just been all these weird reports. Like one of them was like Gronkowski was oh yeah have gotten traded. To he the was gonna Lions. get traded to yeah, the Lions, yeah. and then like that he would comes out. You have the thing about that how he would have retired if that was the case. Brady and Belichick's relationship. They said something the other day where like they were upset with each other. I forgot what it was, but there's like all these little reports. And then you have the whole Garoppolo thing where they mm-hmm. trade him and he looks great. Of course, RIP, he tore his ACL officially mm-hmm. and is out for the rest of the season. That's thanks. Speaking of which, I got to go make a discussion of my thing. Cause I have three backup quarterbacks. I have, nice. I have, I have three total quarterbacks rather. Mm-hmm. And, uh, 
I can trade one. Mm. So I don't know what what uh, what that person's backup quarterback situation is, but mm-hmm. I've got Derek Carr, and I also have Dak Prescott. Mm-hmm. I think Derek Carr is the better is the better hook mm-hmm. for the trade. Right. Probably won't get that something that good out of it, but you know we'll see. We will see indeed. Mm-hmm. I'm um. I think that there were a lot of interesting results this Sunday, like we've been talking about it extensively. But I will say this: the uh, the Cleveland Browns mm-hmm. were the only pick I got like like right last week. Mm-hmm. Wow, for this week, I'm just hiccup. Well, I mean, everyone, dying every, over here. everyone knew it. Did they know that they were going to be? I I knew it as a Jets fan. Yes, I knew it. Eh, Jets fans like to be pessimistic. First off, though. first off, I, because we haven't won anything in years. Yeah, centuries. Anyway, almost, yeah. Um. Yeah, even I knew it. Just first off, I didn't realize that Baker Mayfield never played yet. No, he hadn't played. It was Tyrod or okay. Tyrod Taylor. So who looked awful. By yeah, the way. he was, I was watching that with my friend. He was. It was the worst thing I've ever seen. Yeah, quite I mean, honestly, like, he couldn't make any pass. I mean, he can run. He's a super athletic guy. Um, but wow. And I've always been kind of just changing to a wide receiver. Tell him yeah. he can't play quarterback. To make him a wide receiver. I've always kind of supported Didn't, um, Tyrod. Wasn't Terrell Pryor a quarterback? Yeah, changed the receiver. Yeah, yeah and then look at him. Yeah. Um, he's okay. He had like one good season, but I mean, eh, I mean, it works. But what the thing is that you know, super athletic guy. But I'm watching this. I've always kind of like rooted for him because I thought the Bills have kind of screwed him over a lot. Yeah. And then he comes here, and it's like this. Team, by the way, the Browns they actually have good players now. I think yeah. people are. Is it? People keep saying, "Oh, they lost to the Browns." I don't think you you guys didn't lose to that but, kind of. Yeah, you didn't Browns. lose to like last year's Browns. Like, you didn't lose. Yeah, you didn't yeah. lose to the 0 and 16 Browns. Yeah, yeah, like my team did. Yeah, you. <laughs> Yeah. What, are you, what are you talking They're about? the one team that gave them their one win in the past couple of years. It was oh. two years ago, Christmas Eve. Yeah. Chargers, yeah. Um, yeah, it wasn't the 0-16 yeah, yeah. from last year. Mm-hmm. It's the – yeah, we, tra- eight eight, we, traded seven, for, nine? we traded for Jarvis Landry. We mm-hmm. got a really bang-up de- – we got a really good defense. We mm-hmm. got Miles Garrett first-round pick a couple years ago. We got – um, Ward is good. Uh, is it Jabril Peppers on the team Jabril stuff? Jabril Peppers he, is on the from, team. From the area, by yeah, the way. from the area. Um, Shouts to Jabril. Mm-hmm. Um, Should get him on the show. Like I think, I think what is legit though is their defense. I think their defense is pretty decent. They're not going to be. The, they're yeah. not going to be playoff th- good. They're yeah, going to be good. Like, they're going to be better by default. That's amazing. Yeah, they're the, if they go seven and nine. That's the, incredible. The fact that they tied is already better. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure, for sure. And they could have won those games by the way. Like yeah. yeah, they have a tie and a loss. They almost beat New Orleans, and they almost because of missed field goal. You know what I mean? Those are two tied, of the highest powered offenses. Two in the NFL. two missed field goals yeah. cost them two wins. Right. That's just Brown's luck. Oh, yeah, for sure. And trust me, I can relate with missed field goals Woo. with teams. Anyway, um, we're going to take a little bit of a break. And when we get back, we're going to make our, what is it, week four, four. <laughs> NFL picks. In a month. You won't want to miss it, folks. It's the Digital Dash here on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. And what's up, everybody? We're back here on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. You're listening to the Digital Dash. And here's the funny thing that's going on right now, ladies and gentlemen, is that Anthony wanted to cut me off and do the welcome back 90.3 thing, except his mic wasn't on, you silly gilly. You think you're the one in control? Let me put him back on right now, though. He's back. Anthony Gabinelli, the sports editor. And welcome editor. back to WMSC 90.3. We're on Digital Dash. It's me, Anthony Gabinelli, with my is and with me is the host of the show, <laughs> Javier. Say what's going on, buddy. I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you do it next time. I just thought it would be really funny because I noticed your thing wasn't on and you didn't do that, so I just decided to like mess with you and why are these unscrewed? let you basically talk into a wall essentially. Uh, why do uh, why do best? Mm-hmm. What you do, what you do best. Yes. Uh, so, are you ready? Yeah, I'm just wondering why these are unscrewed. This is really unsafe, isn't it? it, it kind of, yeah, it kind of does a little look a little bit uh, unsafe actually. It looks like it's about to just pull these fall out. on you and break you. I mean, you know, we don't want that happening. We don't. No. 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 I'm not going to move it, so there's that. It's weird that I can barely see. You want to switch that mic over there? Sure. Yeah, Which okay. one? Which one are you talking about? Uh, one, that one right there. Just okay. so I can see you, and I can see the light leave your eyes, you know? <laughs> All right, let me put you on real quick. And you're back? Yo, yo. Yo, yo. I can't so, hear myself in the headphones, but that's a okay. Okay. So. I just went back. <laughs> are you ready, there's Anthony? There's a little note on here. Are you ready, Anthony? What? A oh, little note on here. Yeah, don't touch that. I just touched it. Okay. Great. Guest mic only, yeah, not okay. DJ. Okay. Anyways, well, not- ladies and gentlemen, it took us a little bit to get into the swing of things, as you can hear right now. But it's time for NFL Week 4 Picks. Where's the music? 
There is no music. Oh. I, I I actually think I'm gonna use music next time for this. I'll have like an intro. Either. I think we should do an intro like kind of weird te- theme or whatever. I actually know exactly which one I'm gonna use, but mm-hmm. we'll do that next week. I don't feel like doing it right now. Um, let's do it. Let's do it. Week number four. We talked about some of our impressions, and now we're gonna break down a bunch of the games and give our picks. Okay. So, first of all, we got it's a Thursday night game. Vikings the, Rams. Yeah, the Thursday night game. Minnesota one one and one taking on the still undefeated Los Angeles Rams, who are three and zero. The line is currently at Rams minus seven. It's in L.A., right? It is in L.A. While I am a Minnesota fan, I know where we're going to lose, especially since we cannot beat the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> but somehow we can tie Green Bay, coming back to tie them. And uh, I forgot who we played week one, but you know what? We beat them, so it doesn't matter. We played the 49ers. That's who. Yeah. Um, just remembered. So I'm gonna go with the I'm gonna go with the Rams. Gonna go with the Rams. I uh, hope I'm wrong. Hope you're wrong. Um, hold on, let me turn you up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go with the Vikings. I think that Ooh. of I, I don't know. I do think that the Rams made a bit of a statement win, where it was their only good opponent. I mean, they played Oakland and then they killed Arizona, mm-hmm. which it's like I still think Arizona. Uh, the Rams are like one of the two or three best teams in the entire league. Mm-hmm. Um, probably the best, honestly, just based on their roster, but. They came out and said, no, we're not just going to fall because we're playing someone that's actually like competent now. And they, they showed up. What can I say against my team? And I think that they're due for a loss. I think it's going to be actually a close game. It might be one of the only good Thursday night games we get maybe for this year. Yes, I think the Vikings Sunday, win the this Thursday also. night games are loaded. Yeah, they, they actually have, are kind they of have, like, pretty Fox good made a year. commercial where it's like, yeah, we actually have really good Thursday night games. Yeah, they actually have some good ones. There's no like really bad ones. You know what I mean? Like, there's, there's, Last there's week should have been stuff. the really bad one. Giants Eagles might be bad though if the Giants are incompetent, but it depends. We'll see. Yeah, they're still kind of. I'm not like out on the Giants just yet. Um, I mean, it's only three weeks, four weeks in, so yeah. Uh, but I've got the Vikings. They just lost the Rams. Just lost Marcus Peters and Akeem to leave to injury. I don't know how long. I don't know what the extent of their injury is, but that's gonna affect them a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I just I feel like the Vikings are like annoyed right now. I mean, how do you? That was such an embarrassing loss. They're like, going to want to come back and beat them. get killed in But it's Minnesota. on a short week, too, so. It is on a short week. So that's what I'm saying. I think that that actually kind of hurts both teams. I know it's in L.A., but I'm going to get frisky with it. Actually, you know, no, I changed my mind. I'm picking the Rams. I think the like the, No, I, the, ju- I, ju- I chose the Rams. You got to choose different. No, no, I don't. Be confident. No, no, I don't. Why, why do I have to do that? All right, whatever. Uh, I'm picking the, the Rams. I think they're a true juggernaut. I think they're stacked. You got Goff. You got Gurley. Mm-hmm. Rob Woods. Cooper Cup, Brandon Cooks, they somehow managed to get better in the offseason with Nagamik and Sue, Marcus Peters, Keep Tlaib, signed Aaron Donald finally. Mm-hmm. They're just stacked, and Sean McVay is a genius, and he's young, and I like young guys. So I'm picking the Rams here. I just think that they're going to dominate. But I I wouldn't bet on that game. I think the line is too big, that minus seven. I think that's way too much. I think that the people are forgetting the Vikings are still like one of the top tier teams in the league. Um, next up, we're going to Sunday. And which one do we want to start with? Cincinnati taking on the Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta. Uh, oh. The line right now is Atlanta minus six. Uh, Cincinnati's two and one, and Atlanta is one and two. Really weird that the line is at minus six for the Falcons. It's a little bit strange to me. I know they're home, and they like playing well at home and score line in the dome and all that stuff, but I don't know. This is a really hard game for me to pick. I don't know how to feel about Cincinnati. You know what? It's Matt Ryan excels at, pl- at playing against the Saints, so I really think like this was like his that last week was just his game. Mm-hmm. Because it's the Saints and he knows that team pretty well. Um, I really am a big fan of AJ Green. Had a right. big week last week. Right. It was last week or the week ago or the week. No, it was a Thursday night game two, two weeks, weeks ago, ago yeah. against the Ravens. He caught like three yeah. touchdowns in the first half. He's great. He's a big great. fan of AJ Green. But it looks like he's a little banked up right now. I don't know if so. he's out. I don't know if he's going to miss the game. But based off was yesterday, he out last I was week? watching. No, it's just that he oh. got hurt this this past like oh, okay. yesterday. Um, I don't know how, what extent of his injury, but. We'll have to monitor that. Uh, who are you picking? I'm still going to pick the Falcons, I think. Falcons? Um, I think I am too, actually. I just think that, that I've watched them, and it's like they had that awful performance week one. Mm-hmm. But they actually look okay now. Like They're running a somewhat efficient red zone offense, which has been the big like uh, Achilles saw, heel. Not I even saw, Achilles heel, but I just I saw an problem. interesting stat that uh, Calvin Ridley has as many touchdowns in that game yesterday as Julio Jones yeah. did all season. Yeah. It's weird yeah. that they can't get him the ball in the end zone. I don't understand it. He like he has like 1,800 yards a year, but like two TDs. It's so weird. Like, how is that possible? I, I don't know any receivers that are like I that. I think it's just because 
they know that he's going to be the primary target. True. But still, you but would then, like, think. Like, same right? thing would happen with Antonio Two Brown, really right? Low. Yeah. I mean, Antonio Brown gets touchdowns all the time, though. That's the difference. He, he has like nine every year. Mm-hmm. But, and I think that we shouldn't also just judge based off of touchdowns about mm-hmm. Julio Jones. He's a freak of nature, that guy. Um, but yeah, I'm going to pick the Falcons. I know I, I just contradict that... everything I said when I was talking about how I love AJ Green. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm that's the gonna, way to set up a pick right there. I'm still going to choose Falcons. All right. Yeah, me too. Um, so far, we're in agreement on everything. Tampa Bay is at Chicago. Uh, the line right now is Chicago minus one. So true pick them. The game is in Chicago. Both teams two and – or no, Tampa, I'm sorry, is 2-0 and oh and Chicago's 2-1. and one. But Tampa, of course, remains to be seen what they do tonight against Pittsburgh. Um, that game is set for an 8 o'clock, 8.20-ish start. And next week is uh, the first week where Jameis Winston actually. is available, right? Yes, and they said they're not starting him. Unless Fitzpatrick is colossally bad, apparently, is the quote, then they're still going to use Ryan Fitzpatrick, and they should. James Winston isn't good. Sorry to break the news to people. He's not very good. He's fine. He's a fine, okay dude who looks great at some times, and immediately when you're getting excited, he plays an awful defense and then can't throw the ball anymore. You know what I mean? That's that's James Winston for you. And Fitzpatrick, meanwhile, he's like, he's on some new age, like, Don't greatest hits mode right now. Don't believe the hype. I <laughs> warn you. You'll be talking about this now. They'll, resi- they'll re-sign him for next season. They'll start a couple games, and he'll disappoint you. All right, so you're referring to the Jets thing. Yes. Right? So here's my thing. First of all, at least Ryan Fitzpatrick, we've seen him have success before. He did take the Jets. They were 10-6. and six. He had a good season. Didn't He's had playoffs. moments. This isn't Sam Bradford. This isn't Blake Blaine Gabbert. This isn't, you know, Matt Castle. This isn't all the Brandon Whedon, who somehow managed to stay in the league for as long as he did. Like, at least this guy has had success, so mm-hmm. it's not totally inconceivable what's happened so far. I don't think he keeps it up, but Mike Evans and, um, you know, Chris Godwin and some of those guys and Deshaun Jackson, like, those are solid receivers. I still think they need a run game. I don't understand how their defense has been able to not be catastrophic, considering that they had these – they had, like, the worst secondary in the NFL the past couple of years, and they lost their starters <laughs> before the season started. So I'm really curious to see how though. this – yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm really curious to see how this one pans out, but it's not inconceivable, man. I think that I think Fitzpatrick is going to keep the job for a little bit. And also with the Jets, I think they got screwed over with their schedule when they were bad that year. I really do. I think scheduling only matters if you're like a decent team, but you get really bad matchups early. You remember they played like Cincy when Cincy yeah. was really good. They played Buffalo. That's kind of a cakewalk. Cake, cakewalk. Cakewalk. Then they played like Arizona, Kansas City, and in Kansas City, Pittsburgh, and Seattle. That's kind of crazy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, I really think that season was like, if you just give them maybe two of those games aren't as bad, I don't think they're as big of a disaster as they were. I think they lost their confidence. I think Marshall got banged up a little bit. And the coaching was just like, we don't know what to do. He had like that six interception game that was bad. I think schedule really kind of killed the Jets. That and with that me. said, I'm going to choose the Bears. You can choose the Bears? Yeah. Mitch Trubisky. Doesn't look that great, I must say. He's not a good quarterback. What, so I have a question. It's it's crazy here that they decided to pick the guy who started for maybe 13 games for UNC. But no, Deshaun Watson, the guy who beat Alabama in the national title game and led Clemson to multiple championship type of runs for like three years, that's the guy who gets taken later. Okay. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. I really like the the recruiting process that NFL coaches use. Really makes a lot of sense. So congratulations, Chicago. That being said, though, that defense is good, man. That defense is good. Yeah, it surprised a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, the Khalil Mack thing was really like the final mm-hmm. piece that completes everything. They needed a pass rusher, and they got it, and he's been unbelievable. And I love all the quotes from Gruden that's mm-hmm. like, we we uh we need a pass rusher. It's like, yeah, you he, traded him. You had one. <laughs> Moron, like... <laughs> For what? Uh, for what again? You got it for draft picks? How mm-hmm. many draft picks? Oh, they got two first rounders, but they also gave back a second rounder. Yeah, highway yeah. robbery. It's pretty. It's pretty nuts. It's one of the worst, worst trades that I've seen in a while, for sure in the NFL. I can't point to exact ones, but they've got they've made some bad ones. Ten years, man. Yeah, man. They're been paying that man for ten years. Also, what a terrible, terrible, terrible analyst he terrible. is. Terrible. Yeah, he is. Literally wait, one of the worst. Who? Literally one of the worst parts about Monday Night Football and anything about football on ESPN. Oh, Gruden. Yeah, Gruden. I actually didn't mind Gruden. I I, I, I his, despise like, kind of him. Upbeat, optimistic. Like, his I'm haircut find is stupid. Fun. He looks like yeah. a four year old. He looks like Chuck. Ch- him and Barry yeah. Melrose are the worst possible things that ESPN has done to their staff. Whoa. Am- among other things, hot take. Hot 
take. Hey, we we uh, support hot takes here on the dash. Stall for a second and make your pick. Uh, I said Bears. Oh, you did? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna take Chicago here too. Although, if if like Tampa has one of those crazy games, this line is gonna move for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably in the. Tampa's I think it really favorite. comes down to what happens today. Yeah, like for the line anyway. Mm-hmm. I think that I don't really think today's game is gonna just sway my decision. I think that I'm gonna take the Bears. Um, I, I think Tampa's going to win tonight, by the way. I really do. I think Pittsburgh is just having locker room paranoia and ridiculousness right now. I think that they're, you have all this stuff about Antonio Brown. You have the linemen attacking Le'Veon Bell because he wants to get paid. Mm-hmm. And just all these little things. <laughs> I love that they just have that video of him jet skiing. <laughs> he really does not care right now. He's like, yeah, I'm just going to wait until like week 10. And more power to him. Um, let's take a quick 30-second uh, break. And when we get back, mm-hmm. we're going to go through the rest of our prick. Wow. Picks. Uh, you your eyes that. just like your eyes. Uh, do I? I think you need to drop that. Really? It sounded a little too much like a, uh, like a, like a something that you shouldn't be saying on uh, air. Do I really? All right. It's, too, me, it's too late now. Yeah, it's. I guess it's too late. It's not really too late, now, but whatever. Um, that's what I heard. At least. Yeah. Hopefully, I don't get fired. Um, quick thirty second break, guys, and we'll be back to talk NFL picks here on ninety point three WMSC Upper Montclair. Guess what, listeners? Your favorite show is back in action. That's. And we're back here, everybody, on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. You're listening to the Digital Dash. Me, your host, Javier Reyes, uh, joined by Mr. Anthony Gabinelli, the sports editor of the Montclairian. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, and we're back talking NFL picks. Let's continue. Um, next game Next game that is here, we got Detroit and Dallas, both one and two. The line is currently at min- Dallas minus three. It is in Dallas. Uh, two one and two teams. What do you think? You know, I think I'm going to go with the underdog here and say Detroit. Got a lot of confidence going out against uh, the Patriots winning that game. Mm-hmm. A lot of, it's one of the big upsets of this week. Mm-hmm. I'm going Lions on this one, honestly. I am too. I mean, I always pick against Dallas, but I think that Dallas is very flawed. Mm-hmm. I don't think they have any receivers. I think they have Elliott in a good line, which is a little bit banged up right now. But at least, st- yeah, like at least Stafford's like a competent, pretty like maybe ten top ten ish quarterback, and those receivers are. He gets good. paid like one. Yeah, he gets paid like one for sure. And those receivers are good: Golden Tate, Marvin Jones, and uh, Kenny Galladay, who looks really mm-hmm. good. Um, he's kind of being a revelation for them. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take Detroit too. So far, we haven't disagreed. This is weird. <laughs> this is strange. Mm-hmm. So you know we're gonna get all of them wrong if mm-hmm. anything, if any indication of last week. So next game up, <laughs> the Buffalo Bills taking on the Green Bay Packers. Uh, Buffalo's one and two, and Green Bay is one one and one. In Green Bay, the line is currently Green Bay minus ten and a half. You see, like, you can't just do that to me this week and then have a game against Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers, a quarterback who just seems to win every time. Mm. Um, Not this past week. Not this past because because I think Washington's like a good team though. I think they're good. Well, Alex Smith isn't a bad. Alex Smith isn't a bad quarterback. Yeah, he's pretty. good. A lot of people like to bang like to bash him and like. Yeah. I just I like him. I always like them. Mm-hmm. He's, he, he, he's not my he wouldn't be my fantasy quarterback mm-hmm. but if he were on kansas city still he would be right i get that um so i'm and with that being I think said you have to take green bay here and that being said i'm gonna choose packers exactly yeah they're home they just lost to washington and they had more that clay matthews thing by the way this is becoming a little bit of a it's problem. bad i mean don't get me wrong i mean we're literally in a class where we're talking about like concussions mm-hmm. and stuff and like it's bad and i get like the but that's pretty that's pretty safe right there. Like Yeah, it's like at some point, when do we draw the line where we're like, his hey, head you're playing is, football though? Clay you know Matthews' I mean? head is literally at Alex Smith's waist. Yeah. And they call roughing the passer. Yeah. And you can see him like try to roll off yeah. and go like this after the tackle too. Like he knew because he'd been called for it twice, week one and week two. And he gets called for it again. And week two cost them a game. That was ridiculous. They should have beaten the Vikings. They did beat the Vikings in my book. But of course, you know. Roughing the pass or roughing you get the quarterback. That tie though. Um, yeah, I know. Um, I was really hoping for another tie this week with the with the Saints and Falcons, mm. so we can have finally have a discussion about why there are still ties in this league. <laughs> That'd be great. Well, wow, it doesn't I make any sense. Like, there. it's just like, why do they play the game in the first place? Then I don't know. I don't know, man. You ask questions, I do not know the answer to. But yeah, I'm it's taking so, Green Bay. It's so stupid. I put this back. Uh, I'm taking Green Bay. Not the not the spread. We're just we're just saying that to give an idea of basically what the how people view it. Just have uh, like a shootout or something. Next game, we've got the Philadelphia Eagles taking on the Tennessee Titans. Both teams are two and one. The line is currently at Philadelphia minus four. The game is in Tennessee. 
I'm still going to go with the Eagles, man. Mm. Um, a lot of people at this radio station would agree with me that they'll <laughs> take the Eagles over the Titans. Yeah. I don't like the man. Titans. I do like Marcus Mariota, but and Derrick Henry for, for that matter. But those two aren't going to do anything with the Eagles' defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Eagles' defense is good. That's just too stacked of a team. I know Wentz was kind of getting into the rhythm of things last week, or mm-hmm. yesterday, I should say. It looked like he was like on sometimes, and then other times I'm like, wow, they're literally just throwing it over the middle every time. They haven't quite nailed like the wide receiver passes just yet. Um, so they had maybe we'll have the first couple Jeffrey. weeks. Yeah, but even this week, it's like, wow, like, you know, Nelson Aguilar didn't do as much. They just they kind of were like surviving based only on the fact that they're so talented. They have so much stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm taking the Eagles too. I think that I think Tennessee was kind of a sleeper heading into the year. Um, Mariota actually played yesterday, mm-hmm. which was weird, and he had like some shaking. Like, there's all this stuff about Mariota where it's like he's just playing apparently, and he was, and they won actually. They somehow beat Jacksonville, so I think Tennessee's still like. They, 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 they got won because of their kicker. Yeah, because of their kicker. They got some buzz still. I wouldn't give up on them yet, but I think a lot of it is contingent on uh, Marcus Mariota's health. What do you what, what do you think about Marcus Mariota, by the way? I think he's okay. I'm higher on him than Jameis because I think Mariota's like – I think he's been really – he's had a lot of talent around him. I don't think he's ever had any, like, coaching. And I think that this new guy might, like, be able to install some stuff. I This is the deciding season for me, though. With, or with Mariota? Or? Yeah, if I'm, like, I'm out or not. Winston, I've made up my mind. I watched that guy too much, and I'm like, this guy's bad. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just, I'm done, I'm done with James Winston. Um, next game up here. So we're both taking the Eagles. Mm-hmm. Next game, we've got Houston and Indianapolis. Houston in uh, Indianapolis. In Indianapolis. Houston is zero and three, and Indianapolis is one and two, just coming off that loss against the Eagles. This is a tough one. I Very like tough. Deshaun Watson. Everyone does, yeah. And I'm not a big Colts fan. Mm-hmm. I've always didn't like him. Mm-hmm. Just because of Peyton Manning, but I, yeah. I mean, Peyton Manning is a great quarterback. Don't get me wrong, I just don't like the franchise. I don't like the owner. I don't like the team except for Peyton yeah. Manning. Yeah, Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning is a respectable guy. <laughs> Everything else, I can't stand about the Colts. I wish they weren't a team. Yeah, um, I agree with you on the owner thing. And with He's that bad. being said, I'm going to choose the Texans. <laughs> All right, I'm taking the Colts. I think that. Yeah, I've that's been on what, this that's for really a the toss up one, I think. Yeah, for sure. I think that they, they both have aren't talent. that good. I think yeah, they're both not that good. They're the Colts are basically entirely predicated on Andrew Luck. Mm-hmm. And they still have some O line problems, don't really have a running game yet. But I look at the Texans and I'm like, I think a problem is their coach. Bill O'Brien's been the coach for a while. And yeah, he's, yeah, he's had out. the excuse of not having a quarterback. But at some point it's like, all right, you have them. Their defense is a little bit more healthy now. They've been playing eh. Wasn't throwing too good yesterday. Yeah, he was like really off. He hasn't mm-hmm. looked that great. He hasn't looked like what we saw last year. The I still think it's because of the knee thing. So I yeah. think once we get more and more into the season, we'll start. You think maybe he's not he'll as get healthy better as, and better. as people think? I'm sorry? You think he's maybe not as healthy as they're letting on? He get, he did come back pretty fast. Yeah, he did come back like, fast. And there was like no question about it. C- compared that always to, makes me compared like, to yeah. Compared to Wentz, like yeah. Wentz had more time. They and gave him a couple like weeks a off. Bit, yeah. You know, they get made like they made sure like this was the week yeah, that he was know. ready. Like as soon as he was medically cleared to play, there you go, he's good. I know what happened earlier. For I don't know if it was as, I don't know if his like tear was as bad as as the other guy, mm-hmm. but I don't know. Maybe he's not fully done yet, fully healed. Yeah, maybe. maybe he's not. Maybe give him more time though. Um, I agree. Now I'm taking Indy because I think that Bill O'Brien's getting fired. I said this last week. I thought that if they lost, actually, that he would get fired. I think if they lose this, he gets fired for sure. He might even get fired, like, not to, not tomorrow, because I think if they did it, it would have happened today. I think they're 0-4, and, and I think people are just like, we're done. We had the quarterback, have some receivers. Um, I actually think they're a Le'Veon Bell candidate, personally. I don't really know how, how I feel about Lamar Miller over there. Um, and also, their he's line good, is atrocious. He's a good running back. Who? Lamar Miller? Yeah. No, I, I think he's, like, okay. I don't know how to, like, feel about him, though. And I think Le'Veon Bell's an upgrade, obviously. So I mean, he'd be an upgrade on any def- yeah, on any offense. Yeah, pretty much any. Yeah, except for like other Dallas. Teams. I would love some like flex for like the Rams to trade for him only because they don't want to play mm-hmm. against them. And they're just like, hey, just just sit on the bench, dude. Don't worry, we'll go, we'll pay your set your your thing, and you can go get a contract somewhere else. We just don't want to play against you. I just think that would be <laughs> that would be such a um, a dab. I guess that would be such a petty move on, by them, but they wouldn't do that. I don't think they can't trade. Um, so moving on, I'm picking the Colts. You're picking the Texans. Mm-hmm. Next up, the Miami Dolphins taking on the, the New perfect Miami the Dolphins. Perfect Miami Dolphins. Dolphins, excuse me. 
at New England, uh, Miami's three and zero, like you said, and New England is one and two. At New England, that pretty surprising loss against Matt Patricia's Detroit Lions last night. The line is right now at minus seven and a half. Who are you taking? That's tough <laughs> because you, no one really thought that the Dolphins would be this good. I thought they, I thought they'd suck, honestly. I don't think they're good though. I think that they've played some bad teams. They I played, think they are this year's kind of like Buffalo, just kind of squeaking by. Who played? Who they played the first week? They played. Oh, they played that stupid. Like there were like five or six. Yeah, they played the seven delays. hour Tennessee game. So they beat them in a seven hour game, and Mariota got hurt. Mm-hmm. Then week two, they go in, and who was it that they beat Jets. here? They beat the Jets, who Darnold first type was a little bit too over the top, and they barely beat them. By the way, it was still yeah. like a kind of a close game. And then they beat Oakland. Cool, you know what I mean. I think that they've had really weird wins. Is Oakland like Oakland still hasn't won a game? No. Let's keep it that way. Game. Yeah, let's keep it that way. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that I don't think Miami's very good. I just think that they're they're kind of getting by with like you really think Danny Amendola, who I think is hurt right now anyway. Like, who are their receivers? Kenny Stills. Like, I don't think Tannehill's very good, and I think the Dolphins are the only people. I like who, Kenny Stills a little who, bit. Yeah, I do like him actually. Now that I think about it. And Frank like Gore is their main running back. No, it's Kenyon Drake oh. technically. But for all the fantasy owners out there, I think I think they just Drew Lister. Who it's gave me just crap. they use they use Frank Gore to show what uh, show Kenyon Drake what they can do, what he can yeah. do, what he can do, what he can be, what he can this be. This is what you can be. Um, and what Justin is saying is like I remember in fantasy, just a quick fantasy aside, my friend Drew, I said that I'm not confident about his team because he has Kenyon Drake, and I'm like, yeah, this guy is not getting full snaps, and Frank Gore, who's like 44 is getting, like, carries. You know what I mean? You would think that you'd be able to beat that guy out, clearly. But no, he hasn't, because one, Frank Gore, I think, is a clear Hall of Famer, for sure. But also, it's like, I don't know if Kenyon Drake is very good, but we'll see. I think they lose this one. That being New said, England. I choose the Patriots. You choose the Patriots. Yeah, that being, all that being said, I choose the Patriots. Uh, I think the Pats, don't get me wrong, we will see, but I think people don't say the whole Patriots are done. This is, like, the 18th time that I've seen where they start off a little bit slow. I do believe I do agree. A couple years ago, they won after yeah. they won after going like two and two, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, they so, they lost to Cincy. I remember on some yeah, pivotal so game. Shut up. Um, they lost to Kansas City at the beginning of last year. Remember that the kickoff? Yeah, kickoff of last the, year. The like, game, Uh-oh. the Kareem Hunt game, where everyone yeah, was like, Hunt "Oh game. God, look at this guy." Yeah, yeah, the Kareem Hunt game. Um, that's what I that's what I did because no one because side note, uh, my fantasy league, no one had Kareem Hunt going last week of uh, going that first week. No one picked them up. So as soon as I saw that he had like forty points in our league, he got like he had like monster numbers. He was the entire offense that game against the Patriots. Went and swiped him. Mm-hmm. And I got him. Basically carried my team. Man, I hate so, yeah. how basic my picks are. Oh man. Anyway. Whatever. What's the next one? We got seven minutes. You got seven minutes. Um let me see here. Oh yeah, you gotta leave. Um uh, yeah. the Jets and the Jaguars. It is at Jacksonville. Jets are one and two, coming off of that loss against who the heck did they lose to? Uh, the the Browns. Cleveland last week, and Jacksonville coming off a loss against Tennessee. Is in Jacksonville. The line is at minus nine. I don't think there's a discussion to be had here. Yeah, I can't see. Well, is it though? I mean, Tennessee just beat them. It's not inconceivable that the Jets come out. Darnold plays kind of well, and Bortles doesn't. You know what I mean? And then I still don't think there's a, just a discussion a here. Yeah, I don't either. Todd, <laughs> Balls, to Todd Balls is out. The, Todd Balls is out the door They're soon. Controversy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is he? Are you sure you don't like Todd Balls? I used to. Mm-hmm. I just don't think him and Darnold match up that well. Mm-hmm. He's made some stupid decisions as well. The yeah. Miami game really showed how Actually, incompetent kinda, of a head coach like he can be. I kind of like Todd. I kind of like that. He's dude. better. The players certainly like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he could still be on the staff at some extent, I would. I'd be okay with that. Mm-hmm. I just I, don't I would, think you I would say now, we though. can have a better head coach. I don't think it happens for a bit though. I, 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 I just, think it goes. I it. think we go the entire season with him as head coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe off. But we go like three and. Which is what I think teams should do. Don't I think fire a coach midseason. I think you just go three and thirteen, end off the season like that, then you fire him or put him on some other position on the staff and have someone head coach. Mm-hmm. I agree. All right. Um. So we both taking Jacksonville here. Mm-hmm. I guess so. I hate how basic and like basic my picks are. Here's a fun one. Cleveland won one and one against the Oakland Raiders. The game is at Oakland. For some reason, the the line is Oakland minus one. That is really low. You know what? That's that's not a pick 'em. That should be a little bit higher. The Browns actually have a good team, and Oakland might not. But you go. You'll you know what? To say something. 
I really want Cleveland to win this one. Mm. I because I just don't like John Gruden. Yeah. I don't like the ten year contract that he gave him. I don't like how much he's getting paid. I don't like the fact that he's a thing. Um so I like Baker. He finally he'll finally get a complete game under his belt. He has some great weapons. Mm-hmm. I love Jarvis Landry. I wish he was on my fantasy team, but unfortunately he's not. Mm-hmm. Um who's the running back? They have three. They have oh, Carlos Hyde, I, I love Chubb, and Carlos Johnson. Hyde is a great yeah, story. Carlos there. Hyde's really good. He's I a like really him. good player. I don't know why they signed him, but he's a really good player. Yeah. Um with that being said, I choose the Browns. And with that being said, I choose the Raiders. Ooh. I think that we you have the to remember first these win are the Cleveland against Browns. Cleveland. Yeah. You have to remember these are the Browns and that there's a lot of Baker hype going on right now. And it feels only Browns esque for them to come in and lose to the team that hasn't won yet. Um it just feels like they're a little bit away. And also, their coach is bad. I don't like Hugh Jackson. I think he's a bad coach. So they, they have to overcome that. It's his first win. Uh, yes, no, not yes, not uh, last week was his first win yeah. as the head coach. I know. Unbelievable. Um, the same yeah, week Pat Shermer Raiders got his first win as a Giants uh, head coach. So next team? You ready for the next team? Yeah. All right. Uh, we've got Seattle. Seattle Seahawks, 1-2, and two, taking on the Arizona Cardinals, who are 0-3. The line is Seattle minus 3. It is, it is in Arizona. I don't think there's a discussion. Again. You know what? No, there might no be a discussion. discussion. Again. There, might be right. a, there might be a discussion just because jo- uh, Josh Rosen's playing. Yeah. So there's no there's no footage of him. I've got Rosen. You got, you got, you got no film. Chosen Rosen. You got no film with him. Mm-hmm. You have no clue what's going to go on. Just like in the Jets game, mm-hmm. they were up against a quarterback that no one's seen before in the league. Mm-hmm. You have no clue what he's going to do. Your defense isn't as good as it, was, as it once was. Um. Because of the lack of the uh, Legion of Boom. Um, with that being said, <laughs> I'm still going to choose the Seahawks. <laughs> and I'm going to take the Cardinals. Chosen Rosen! Let's go! He's, he's got here. A, he's got a lot to prove. He's here. I'm you know? excited. He's going to win. The Cardinals it, are going to win. It's Josh Rosen, right? Not Sam? No, no. It actually was just confirmed like a couple minutes ago, I believe. Yeah, he's starting, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm taking the Cardinals. I think they still got some stuff. I like this Christian Kirk guy a little bit. And they still got Fitz, who is due for a good game, hopefully, for my fantasy team's sake, too. And they still got David Johnson. And I think Seattle, that line is bad, and they're all all based on Russell Wilson. Mm-hmm. I think Arizona gets a win here, actually. I like Pete Carroll, though. I do, too. Um, next game, we've got three more, so we quickly got to get through mm-hmm. this. Um, New Orleans, New Orleans Saints, who are 2-1, and one, uh, going up against the New York Giants, who are 1-2. and two. The line is currently New Orleans in minus New York? three. It is in New York. This is a good one. I like this one. It's a fun game that I think the Giants lose <laughs> because I, agree. I think the Saints are too talented. I agree. I think they've they've had a slow start. It's almost a no discussion game. It's yeah. almost a no discussion game. The Saints have had a, a slow start, but not a slow start that makes me scared. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, all right, they lost to Tampa. That was kind of rough. But then they came back. I, I really don't think that anyone expected that game out of Fitzpatrick. Yeah, I think they're just getting into the groove of things a little bit. I think their defense is a little, a little suspect. Drew Brees broke some history last week that I think yeah. no one's really focusing on. The fact that I think he they're can, fine. The most they're completions fine. ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What a great quarterback he is. He's great. Anyway. Fantastic former Chargers. With that being said, out. I choose. No one really remembers that. Yeah, nobody. Because he wasn't that good. You want you want me to break a myth for you? Yeah. Everyone always gives the Chargers crap for trading Drew Brees. First of all, he like had a hole in his arm or whatever Like when he got injured. he bar- like Nobody wanted him. It was the Saints or the Dolphins. And... It's not like he was this. He was not this when he was on the Chargers. He was throwing like 25 TDs and 12, 13 picks every year. He wasn't that great. He was fine, though. He was like a fine NFL starting quarterback. But he wasn't Drew Brees when he was with us. We never right. knew, and nobody really knew that he was going to be We got a minute. Let's go. All right, we got a minute. Quick. Uh, quickly, Baltimore, Pittsburgh. Baltimore Pittsburgh. is 2-1. and one. Pittsburgh, oh, 1-1. One and one. The line is currently Pittsburgh minus 3 is a Sunday night game. You're Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, next question. Pittsburgh, next question. Uh. Kansas City at Denver, Monday night game. Kansas City 3-0, and Denver 2-1. and No question. Patrick Mahomes, let's go. Okay, those are your picks. Awesome. Now you got to go. Yeah, right? now I go. Now you got to go. It's been a pleasure, sir. Uh, let me let me shake th- your hand th- real th- quick. Thanks for having me on the show, my guy. Yeah. <clears throat> Hopefully, yeah. Uh, 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 great radio Don't content. Don't water bottle. Yeah, that would be bad. Um, maybe we'll be back next week to do NFL picks, perhaps. Um, you got to let me know. Yeah, next week will probably be less hectic yeah. as this one is. So Yeah, no problem. Um, so we'll see. But always more than welcome, Mr. Mm-hmm. Gabs, uh, the sports editor of the Montclarian, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as we approach the top of the hour here, 
hold on, let me wait for it. I want to make it official, you know what I mean? And one, two, and we are officially past the top of the hour here at 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. Uh, just did some football talk with Anthony making our picks. Had to quickly run through those last two, so I didn't get to make my pick. Um, so let me make that right now. Uh, with the With the Ravens and the Steelers, this is an interesting one. I think that Baltimore, not Baltimore, or yeah, Baltimore, I do, that seems weird, man, because I think they're coached actually pretty well, and they do have talent. I wonder about Flacco, although Flacco hasn't been as disastrous as he has been in years past. Um, so I, I give him credit for that, I guess, and they've got Lamar Jackson in the wing, and he's basically the only rookie left out of the rookie quarterbacks that hasn't started. Um, I think that, ooh, this is tough, man. This one I actually think matters a lot on – or it depends a lot on how they do tonight. I really want to see Pittsburgh tonight and how they do. That being said, it, it, the game is in Pittsburgh. Um, if the game was in Baltimore, I might be taking Baltimore. But this time, I think I'm going to take the Steelers, but I do not feel confident about that. I think that this could be one of those Roethlisberger, oh my God, he needs to retire right now games. You know, like those games where he turns the ball over like seven times. Um, like he did against the Browns week one. Or it could be his good game, but I'm going to... I'm going to side with it being a bad Roethlisberger game. I think Baltimore's got some playmakers on there. Still got my guy, Eric Weddle, my dude, former Charger, of course. And they've got they've got some decent run game. They've got okay receivers. The big thing is the quarterback. But I think Pittsburgh wins this one. I think that they need to win something. I mean, that, that team is too talented on offense to not – to just keep losing. You know what I mean? And we have to, of course, see what happens tonight. Um, I'm actually – I'm really excited for tonight's game. I, I really hope that Fitzpatrick keeps it going. <laughs> I really do. He's been such a great story for the league this year. Uh, I really hope he keeps up the pace. Um, so, yeah, I got Pittsburgh there. In a close one, though. I think that's a good old-fashioned, you know, you know, grindy, kind of really ugly-looking, just beat em up rivalry game between the Steelers and the Ravens. Uh, then the Monday night game. Patrick Mahomes, who was apparently just the second coming of Joe Montana. Uh, I remember there was a stat yesterday I was watching with my friend. Um on red zone and they were basically showing that Patrick Mahomes has like the most touchdown passes through the first three weeks of the season of anyone ever which is like yeah you can sometimes bring up anyone ever stats whenever they start doing these on pace things where they say through two weeks someone has this amount of yards or this amount of catches or whatever it feels like that's kind of a made-up kind of arbitrary thing to do but in this case all the guys on the list it was like Peyton Manning Tom Brady Brett Favre Jim Kelly and John Elway. Pretty crazy list to be on. So that tells me that that you know, little diagram that they showed, actually, there's, there's credence to that. You know what I mean? So Pat Mahomes, they lucked out, unfortunately, for my Chargers, who, I mean, not only is our team unlucky, but everybody else around us is just getting really fortunate. And they lucked out. I don't want to say they lucked out, but they traded up for this guy, obviously, um, in the draft last year. And they let him sit for a year and... I, I was wrong. I thought the Chiefs were going to struggle a little bit. I thought Mahomes was going to be really interception prone, but be solid. I thought I think he would have a lot of big, deep plays, but throw a lot of picks. But clearly, it doesn't seem to matter. Um, their offense is absurd. I thought what was going to matter was the defense, and it does. Um, people have to keep in mind that this defense is atrocious. Um, they're reportedly in trade talks for Earl Thomas of the Seattle Seahawks, which would give them kind of a lethal like safety-secondary combination with Eric Berry and Earl Thomas, both of them. So that could be interesting to see, but I don't know if the two of them could make enough of an impact, but I guess we'd have to see. And we'd have to see if he even gets traded there, of course, Mr. Earl Thomas. Um, that, like, I just think that, you know, there, it doesn't matter. And I think I underestimated the fact that, yeah, he's kind of a rookie, and yeah, I think people are overhyping him, frankly, just because they like seeing him throw the ball far. So everyone's like, wow, Patrick Mahomes, he's going to be great this year. And we don't know for sure. He looks great, and I don't think it matters that their defense is bad. I really don't think it matters. It might not. They're going to put up like 45 a game. They might give up like 20, like 33 points every game. That was a really random number. Um, but he's just going to put up too many points. And Kareem Hunt hasn't, I mean, he got going a little bit yesterday, but he hasn't quite been super involved quite yet. You know, and he's been solid and steady. But um, I do think the Chiefs, I thought people were going to realize by like week four that the problem with the Chiefs is not the quarterback with Alex Smith last year. But the the problem was their defense. That still stands. However, the difference between my preseason prediction and now is that the Chiefs are actually good. Um, and all that being said about the Chiefs, I'm taking the Denver Broncos to upset the Kansas City Chiefs on Monday night. No, I'm kidding. Um, I actually got to think about this one because Denver, 
I like that team, man. I've, I've always kind of had this weird soft spot, despite them being in the division, where I think Demarius Thomas was a really great receiver for a long time. He's kind of lost his step a little bit, and they have Emmanuel Sanders, who's just a stud right now, who's still going, still super, super fast, and makes a crazy highlight reel catch seemingly every week, so good for him. But Case Keenum has not been good. You know what I mean? I think Denver's solid. I still have them winning. Nah, I mean, I had them winning the division. I don't know if I still have it. And they're in Denver. I know they have Chubb and they have Von Miller on the defense. Their defense is okay. It's like a, you know, a yield, don't break type of, or bends don't break, I mean, type of defense. But I think this is one of those cases where they just they just can't do it all, man. You know what I mean? And I think that Mahomes is going to come in there. And unless Case Keenum looks like what he did last year with the Vikings, I think Denver, Denver's, you know, got a real fight for him uh, heading for them. So I think this is going to be kind of a cruddy game. I think... I think Pat Mahomes doesn't light it up quite as much, but I think he puts up like 25, which is like still a lot. But for him, that's like a downgrade. Uh, and then they beat Denver kind of soundly. I think Case Keenum struggles yet again. Um, hopefully not for the rest of the season for their sake. And I feel like it's going to be like the worst Monday game we've had so far this year. But we will have to see, ladies and gentlemen, because we still have tonight's game. And we got the rest of the year. So, yeah, those are my NFL picks. Um, just to run through them one more time really quickly. Oh, and I forgot the Chargers and the Niners. I totally forgot about that when Anthony was here. I'll have to text him about that. Uh, just to go through that game really quickly, that game is the char- uh, 49ers are 1-2. and two. Same thing with the Chargers. The game is in L.A. Uh, it is currently at L.A. minus 11.5. So why is the big spread so there? Well, because Jimmy Garoppolo, as I mentioned earlier, he is out for the season with a torn ACL after suffering a non-contact injury against the Chiefs yesterday. Uh, so that's heartbreaking. And, yeah, the, the line is pretty high here and deservedly so. I don't really know who their quarterback is, actually. I don't know who their backup is. I think it's C.J. Brethard, Bethard, Bethard, something like that. C.J. something uh, is their backup quarterback. He's some young guy, and he's expected to be a project. Um, I don't love the skill players on that team. I think that Pierre Garçon's okay. I think Marquise Goodwin's pretty okay. but And George Kittle's pretty okay. But without Garoppolo, this team is sunk and... Hopefully Garoppolo makes a speedy recovery because I actually think he was doing pretty well this year. You know what I mean? He didn't light it up as much as I think people thought he was. I know there were MVP odds for him were really high before the season started. But now you see that the Niners, they're kind of in trouble. Um, And that stinks because I kind of wanted to root for the Niners a little bit. I don't know why. There's just something about them. I like their uniforms, I think. But, yeah, the Chargers are going to win that one soundly. So, yeah, I got the Chargers over the Niners and moving through the rest of the games. I have the, the Rams over the Vikings. I have the Falcons over the Bengals, the Bears over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, the Detroit Lions over Dallas, Green Bay soundly beating Buffalo uh, in Green Bay. I've got Philadelphia over Tennessee. I've got Indianapolis over Houston. I've got New England over Miami. I've got the Jaguars over the New York Jets. Oakland over the Browns, unfortunately, for my guy Baker Mayfield. And I've got Arizona over Seattle because Chosen Rosen is here. I'm so high on Josh Rosen. I don't really know why. I love that dude. Um, And then we've got, let's see here, and last couple games, I've got the Saints over the Giants, Pittsburgh over Baltimore, and Kansas City over Denver. So, yeah, that's the NFL talk of the week, guys, on the Digital Dash. We talk about sports every now and then. Um, We're going to take a little bit of a break here, and when we come back, I'm going to talk about Cowboy Bebop for just a little bit, and then we're going to close things out and talk about what we have in store for next week. So stay in tune, guys, or stay tuned, guys, here on the Digital Dash. You're listening on 90.3 WMSC, Upper Montclair. And what's up, guys? We're back on here on 90.3 WMSC, Upper Montclair. Uh, you're listening to the Digital Dash. Just got done giving my NFL picks of the week. It's been a good show so far. And lastly, we have one more topic. One more topic to get through and it's a little bit of kind of not really a a pertinent one to now there's nothing about it that has to do with anything in the news or sports or anything but I want to talk about a show called Cowboy Bebop and for those who don't know Cowboy Bebop is a famous anime um from like 1990s you know what I mean it's it's old and it's basically it's very simple it's one of my favorite animes and honestly just one of my favorite shows and I honestly only started it uh, earlier this year, I watched it for the first time, uh, back in like early January, and it's really easy for people to get into, and it's famous for a reason. I can attest to that. And 
what's crazy about the show is that it's not really all that like the summary the the basic premise of it is very simple it's just uh takes place in the future and it's about space bounty hunters essentially uh the main one being a fellow by the name of spike spiegel and you know of course like i said the series was written by kane kuga published by katawaka shoten uh i am going to probably mispronounce a lot of these things and directed by uh shinshiro watanabe it is it's really good man and if you haven't seen it i really recommend it because it ages extraordinarily well you know it, it has and this is what i wanted to get into is that the show has a lot of themes in like there's a lot of themes in cowboy bebop that are thematically kind of exceptional and it reminds me a lot of blade runner where it on the surface it's a fairly basic thing you know blade runner it's just the future and Basically, this guy who has to hunt down these things that look like people and act like people. Um, and that, of course, that movie gets into existentialism and, you know, all these other kind of things and love to a degree and what life means. All these kind of crazy themes. And Cowboy Bebop is a lot like that. It touches on themes of, you know, love and romance and revenge and nihilism. A deep, deep nihilism for sure is in there, um, especially with the main character, um, Spike Spiegel, who is basically this ultimate you know, kind of apathetical character. And that's what I wanted to get into today is just talk about the brilliance of, in my opinion, sci-fi stories that don't take any particular route with their, with uh, how they view the future. They don't go one way or the other. Meaning, uh, to rephrase that, they don't picture a dystopian, ruined, you know, apocalyptic setting, but they also don't have this utopia where everything's good and we are curing cancer or whatever you know what I mean instead it's somewhere in the middle and that's what Cowboy Bebop gives me a sense of where it's this story about you know a group of bounty hunters and I won't spoil it I, I refuse to spoil it um it's it's a lot of self-contained episodes really that have to do with different things it's there's the more pivotal episodes in the series that deal with uh Spike Spiegel's like past and what happened in his past for sure and those are exceptional. And then there are crazy episodes that are about shrooms, as in drugs. And, you know, one about <clears throat> space monsters, you know, lurking in the fridge and all that stuff. And one about an old guy that just wants to play chess. You know what I mean? The, the varying things that the group run into, the main group of characters on the show run into, you'll never really expect. It's always all over the pace. And... It touches on so many interesting ideas in human nature, too. And Spike is the center of that. And like I said, this apathetical approach where the show, a lot of times, I remember there's one episode where they visit Earth again. That's another thing is that, keep in mind, the, the whole, like, in this universe, in this Bebop universe, it's like the whole galaxy is kind of connected and you have spaceports and all that stuff. And they visit Earth at one point. It's like, eh, nothing ever good comes from the Earth anymore. You know what I mean? There's a line about that. And... It's it's true, like, Earth is kind of messed up in this universe, but we're not all dead, though. We're all living on other places, you know what I mean? It takes this approach that, yeah, things are, a lot of things got worse, but there's only just mildly inconvenient things that happen, you know what I mean? Where it's like, you can still make money. It's almost like we are still where we are now. It's just things have gotten more advanced technologically. But for the most part, just as a species and how we evolve, we've stayed the same. That's kind of how I view the show. And that's, that's an interesting little subtext to it that I find. And I love, I, I've rewatched it like three times and it's awesome. And literally the main character, Spike, his main thing is, and it's actually my Twitter bio too, is whatever happens, happens. You know what I mean? And that's kind of the approach the series takes. Um, of course, it gets serious at a lot of times. And what it reminds me of is um, a movie called The Fifth Element which is a movie that I think is extraordinarily underrated. Uh, I remember when it came out, actually, like, critics kind of hated it, gave it, like, F scores. I know Roger Ebert, I believe, didn't like it. Or maybe he did like it, I don't remember. But it didn't receive critical acclaim at all, and it was this weird movie. You know, it's uh, Bruce Willis, um, Gary Oldman, Chris Tucker plays this wild, ridiculous kind of diva in the movie. And what I love about that movie is that it is about this kind of god character, essentially, which is Mila Djokovic, who, for those who don't know, famous for the Resident Evil series. And my dad's listening right now, so he knows a lot about the Resident Evil series. My dad likes all these crazy, awful, weird, <laughs> weird series. Like, he'll watch anything, and he loves the Resident Evil movies. So um, 
and Mila Djokovic, this is what she first stars as. And I don't want to get too much into the plot of the movie. It's a little bit confusing to describe, but basically that movie serves as like a giant satire of the sci-fi genre and just society in general. Where like there are scenes in that movie where it's like it shows you outside. And I feel like this movie was a little bit ahead of its time where it shows you outside like uh, Corbin Dallas is the name of the main character and he lives in this apartment pray, played by uh, Bruce Willis and he lives in this apartment and you look outside and it's like you can see this giant you know technologically advanced city it's floating in the sky but then if you pay attention you see that also there's this dusty smoky underbelly which kind of implies that earth is messed up you know maybe global warming got the planet you know greenhouse gas effects all that stuff the planet's messed up but it's okay because we're living up here now. That's kind of the attitude the the movie has where it's almost like the future isn't awful. We survived. We're still going on. And there's mild inconveniences. There's cases of fascism where like you have to, the citizens in this apartment he lives in, they have to put their arms on the wall and like, or else you'll get like shocked or whatever. But as long as you do that, you're fine. And it's this interesting idea. It's this really cynical, but also equally optimistic approach you know what i mean to the future in sci-fi and i'm a big fan of that i'm a big fan of sci-fi stories and i'm, I'm really looking for more that are like this because i believe that bebop and fifth element are really ones that exemplify this the best where it's like yeah you know there's these floating vendors and stuff you know what i mean you can buy food wherever you are now um even though that's kind of becoming real with things like um postmates and blue apron but back then of course when the movie came out that's crazy and you know we have flying cities you can go on ship cruises and all this stuff But then we haven't solved other things. There's still war. You know what I mean? But it's like we're still hanging out. And I just like that. It's this weird approach to it. And that's what I love about Cowboy Bebop so much. It is a show that has a great cast of characters. I recommend watching the uh, English dub, actually, which a lot of people will tell you that with anime that you definitely want to watch the subtitles because the voice acting is far superior and that the English is just awful and it sounds bad. Cowboy Bebop is one of the few anime that I've seen and also other people would probably co-sign this too it's one of the few anime ever created where the english dub is actually far superior uh the main character spike is voiced by a fellow by the name of steve bloom and he is fantastic like you you might have actually heard his voice before just scrolling through the the late night hours of sci-fi channels and whatnot but he's excellent and he had he's you know he's really he's just this stoic relaxed character who's lazy but super smart and just has this attitude about life he has a dark past and there's a lot very i almost like describing him as han solo if he never found like the rebellion might be a way i describe him you know what i mean where he never found his actual purpose it's like he never was saved almost i'm not saying that he's like this drug rattled character he's fine he's hanging out you know what i mean and he's he's a bounty hunter and he's finding people and capturing them and trying to get money out of it and the show starts off actually in a really humorous way where he gets mad at his co-pilot Jet for not <laughs> because he lies about the food that they got him. He says it's bell peppers and beef, but there's no beef in there and he's yelling at him and all this stuff. And it's a funny show too. That's another thing. It's a cynical and uh but also optimistic show, but also it just has some fun humor in there. There's also strong female character representation in there with a character by the name of Faye Valentine who shows up and there's there's actually another female character in there who's Ed, Edward something. I forgot how to say her an old name, who's just this eccentric teenage kid. Not even teenage kid, more like 14. I forget how old she is in this. And she's just crazy, but she's a super computer genius. Like, super computer genius. Like, it's ridiculous. And she joins the crew, too, at some point. So it's this really eclectic mix of people that ha- makes no sense. There's also a dog that named Ein who has the intellect basically of us human beings but as a dog and can't speak human language obviously but it has like the same intellect and the dog's just hanging out and there's some and it's also not long that's another thing that um is going for bebop and why i think a lot of people should try and give it a shot if you have hulu it's on there or crunchyroll i know that those are two things that are streaming it now and what's cool is that uh what was i saying um that it's really easy to get into you know, this is not a show that has 4,000 episodes like Naruto, which I'm a big fan of. But still, Naruto has like 700 episodes. This one's 30 or 28, actually, to be specific or 26. I forgot. And that's it. You know what I mean? That is it. It ran its course and it's great. It's not even a cult classic anymore. It is very much, you know how like things they've 
they establish such a cult following that eventually they're no longer underrated. That's kind of what Cowboy Bebop is. And it is a super inspired piece of art that I love and talking about. It makes me want to watch it when I get home. Um, I know I've actually piqued other people's interest. I know my friend John, who's been on the show before, uh, says that he's he watched like I've actually watched a couple episodes with him um, and he likes it a lot, too. It's got great music. And I really like I said, I really like these things in sci fi that talk about the future but not take an extreme stance. And in a way, I think that's th- this more nuanced approach is what we need to take for a lot of things in culture and in politics and in the world. We need to try and look at things in a more even keel kind of way and not go one way or the other. You know what I mean? It's just funny to me. We're not going to explode and combust in like 100 years. Maybe the planet will die, but uh, whatever. We'll just move on to another planet. There's just something beautiful and kind of poetic in a way about that that I really enjoy. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try and get my friend John on to discuss more at length the Cowboy Bebop at some point, but I just wanted to touch on it really quickly and why I love that show so much. And this is one of my favorite episodes is Bohemian Rhapsody, not just because of the name of it, but because that is a show just about this dude who likes to play chess. <laughs> and sorry, sorry for spoiling a, you know, over 20 year old show, but that's not even a spoiler actually. It's just this old guy and he just likes to play chess. You know what I mean? It, it talks about these little tiny uh, things in life and every character is different every subject in the show is different that they're chasing after or trying to protect everyone's got a weird story that's what Cowboy Bebop's about it's about finding your story it's about this you know apolitical and apathetical approach to things and just saying whatever happens happens basically in the words of Mr. Spike's Beagle so yeah that's my little rift on Cowboy Bebop and sci-fi and I love sci-fi and I love that theme in sci-fi that I've been talking about at length for the past like 15 minutes and that's it that's all i have to say i wish someone else was here to really kind of co-sign my and approve of my love for the show but you can go on the internet and just see this is one of the great uh just science fiction just tv shows in general not just anime it's one of the best out there so yeah i recommend it to people if you have hulu it's on there um it's not long really easy to get into like i said that's basically all you need to know it's about space bounty hunters that's it and you will be surprised by the themes that this show touches on so yeah, that's it, guys. Um, you're tuning to 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair, the Digital Dash, hosted by your boy, Javier Reyes. We're going to take a little bit of a break um, and wind down the show when we get back. Just preview next week and, you know, close things out. So yeah, stay tuned, guys. 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. And what's up, everybody? We're back here on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. You're listening to the Digital Dash in the waning hours of the digital dash, actually. Uh, yeah, we're wrapping things up, guys. It's been a really fun show. Talked a lot about NFL picks for this week. Um, did my whole opening dash thing. I, I really enjoy doing that. I really enjoy going through um, all of the picks. Or not all the picks, all the some of the news stories really quickly. And I introduced the new part of it, which is my reads of the week. Uh, which is just three things that I read that I enjoyed a lot. It could be anything. And I think I'm going to bring that back next week. Um and of course, we talked about American Vandal season two with my friend Alex Eichler, who called in from a disclosed location in Ireland, Dublin, uh, and that was a lot of fun. You know, international type of guests we've got now. Isn't that crazy? How many shows do you know that do that? Uh, so that was a lot of fun. Really had a great discussion there, in my opinion, about that show. Um, then we did the NFL picks, and then of course I did my little thing on Cowboy Bebop and a lot and sci-fi in general. You know what I mean? So it was it was a really fun show. Just three basic topics, but it, they were stretched out. You know what I mean? So before we, we kind of wrap things up, of course, uh, I want to give a little bit of a preview for next week. Of course, we're probably going to do NFL picks again. Um, I don't know if Anthony's going to be here. It's kind of a week-to-week thing. Um, I'm assuming he'll be back because this is around around 5 o'clock is usually when he gets out of class. But we'll see what happens there. Um, but what you can expect for next week, number one, uh, my friend Trevor, uh, Trevor Goya, who you might have heard already here on WMSC somewhere on some other show, uh, he's going to stop by. And we're going to talk about Comic-Con because he's going. He's going to New York City Comic-Con. It starts the October 5th through 7th weekend. Uh, he's going to be going, checking out you know, all the pavilions and the events and what's going on, what do they show. So he's going to be reporting about that for WMSC. And he wants to come on the show to just talk about it a little bit. And that's going to be a lot of fun. You know me. I'm a super nerd. Why not? You know what I mean? Nerdy stuff is great. I love it. <laughs> so I'm really excited. We're going to talk to him about that. And maybe there might be a follow-up on that where we talk about what he saw. You know what I mean? So next week's going to be like a little bit of a preview of the event and what he expects and, you know, what he's most excited for. So that should be a lot of fun. Um, Also going to talk about The Good Place, 
which premieres on the 27th season three. It is one of my favorite shows on right now. It is brilliant, and I'm going to talk more about it in, in more depth, hopefully with a guest, maybe my friend Robert O'Connor, who might still be listening. He sent me a Snapchat, actually, of him listening in the car, which is awesome. You can hear it on radio. How cool is that, man? I'm like on a radio station. It's so cool. Um, and maybe he'll come on for that. Otherwise, I'm just going to give my thoughts on the series as a whole and the premiere and what I thought. I really think that show is brilliant, and if you're not watching it, please do. It is awesome, and seasons one and two are both on Netflix now, so get caught up in three days <laughs> that's plenty of time to catch up you know what i mean this show actually flies by fairly quickly so it's not too big of a watch but i really recommend it. it's worth it um another one that i have on the on the list on the agenda is to talk about a movie called naruto road to ninja so it's based off the highly popular animated series and it is one of the the like eight or nine naruto movies that were made and i want to talk about this one with my friend tommy who was on last week for those who tuned in and we talked about fantasy football and Mario Party, <laughs> oddly enough. And now we're going to talk about anime. So as you can see, we, we like getting all types of topics uh, here on the Digital Dash, no matter what they are. And it's going to be fun because I actually, like, I love Naruto, but I think that the movies are a little bit hit or miss. This is one, though, that I genuinely think is really great. And I feel like this is something that I can't just talk about alone um, because it's such a somewhat convoluted show for people who haven't seen it yet. And I just want to talk about what that movie does well and what it does for the show. Does it stand alone as just a regular film and as an animated film? Does it do that well? Or is it reliant on you watching Naruto? So you'll have to see that next week. It's it actually, I think it's actually a beautiful uh, piece of the Naruto universe in a lot of ways. And I think it has a lot of uh, emotional beats in there that really hit really hard that work in a lot of ways. So get on my friend Tommy Burn on for that. And I have some other plans possibly for next week, but nothing set in stone, so I don't want to reveal everything. You can't reveal all your tricks. You know what I mean? What's that phrase about gambling that people say? Never show your hand? No, that's not a gambling phrase. Gambling's like show everything. Gambling's just like like go on the edge and lose it all. You know what I mean? So I don't think that that's a gambling thing. Maybe it's like poker. I don't know. I'm getting caught up in nonsense. So yeah, guys, that's the end of the little dash. We're going to cut off a little bit early this time, and... I'm going to go home and watch this uh, Steelers game, hopefully. See what happens. I'm excited for it. And, yeah, great show, guys. All hail Spike Spiegel, Cowboy Bebop. And remember, uh, you can catch my show every Monday um, here at WMSC or 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair from 4 to 7 p.m. on Mondays. You know, same time slot as the summer, except this time it is on, on Monday. You know what I mean? Making your Mondays a little bit better. Even though I actually think Mondays aren't the worst day of the week. I feel like I'm the only person who thinks that. I think Tuesdays are worse. Because because Tuesdays, Mondays, like, you have that thrill of maybe recapping what happened over the weekend. You know what I mean? Like, you can talk about it. And then Tuesday's the same thing as Monday, except it's now day two. You know what I mean? Wednesday's hump day. Thursday, you're one step closer to Friday, and Friday's great. That's just me, though. I don't think Mondays are that bad. But I know that is a – I'm in the minority on that. So, yeah, I'm hoping <laughs> – I'm going to so many tangents. I'm hoping that I make you guys' Mondays just a little bit better, talk about all the pop culture and stuff. So, yeah, remember, Mondays, every Monday, uh, 4 to 7 p.m. here on 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. And that's it for the Digital Dash. I'm your host, Javier Reyes. Hope you guys have a great night. And as always, remember, never accept the world for what it appears to be. Dare to see it for what it could be. Take care, guys. And as always, to close things out is Journey with Separate Ways.